everyone! Welcome back to another commentary. I am Captain Logan. Joining me today, as always, for the Star Trek commentaries is Adam Meredith and Brandon Grimm. Hello! And it's time, finally, for Star Trek Into Darkness, our pin-ultimate Star Trek commentary, you know, for now. Oh Although, boy. it's going to be a lot of years at this point before we get another one past <laughs> beyond, because Star Trek Four has apparently been cancelled. We don't know when we'll ever see... Another movie, right. so we've just got two more guys for the per for the foreseeable future. Wow! Or Star Trek Into Darkness, or Stid, if you'd like. <laughs> yeah, oh, I'm not saying that. <laughs> I'm gonna say that. Oh, it, what, what do you call Beyond? Beyond. STB. <laughs> STB. <laughs> what do you call Voyager? Voy. Voy. <laughs> I always preferred the VGR uh, ab ab abbreviation. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> well, no, I wouldn't pronounce it any more than I pronounce toss. Toss drives me crazy. Toss. I feel like everybody that People does say that. Toss. So, yeah. <laughs> I've never heard that. <laughs> well, and it's been a long time since I've heard anybody complain about this and make this yeah. argument. I always thought it was really pretentious. I had Star Trek yeah. friends in high school and just after high school that would act like you weren't a real so you, Star Trek fan unless you pronounced it oh my toss. Goodness. So you've got toss and hunter of toss. Hunter of toss. <laughs> 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 that was good. <laughs> I was, uh, I was just nerdy enough. That was, that was wonderful. All right, so uh, Star Trek Into Darkness. Uh, this is a movie that I have been horrified to go back and watch. And I seriously considered going ahead and watching it again in preparation for this. Um, I did I did everything else. I went back and I and I, and I I reread uh, the Countdown Into Darkness comic. Uh, I listened to uh, most of the chapter on this from the 50-year mission. Uh, I, did, I, I did all kinds of stuff in preparation for this, but I didn't watch the movie again uh, because I I haven't seen it since the theater, and oh, I've yeah, been... Really? Yeah, because... I didn't know. You hadn't seen because it. Because I really liked it. And we <coughs> we did... You know, I saw it twice, and on a second viewing, I had a bazillion D problems. Mm -hmm. And we did a podcast w with uh, Brandon and myself and my wife, and uh, people complained in the comments that we nitpicked too much. <laughs> and I just remember thinking, like, a whole lot of our beefs felt like real honest beefs. And yeah. yet somehow none of it completely killed the material for me. But I was afraid after that to go back to it because um, I, was, I was afraid it would be like 09 again, where I would just... I, you know, not care for it the more I watched it. And then now, you know, seven years later, it's crazy to consider it's been yeah. that long, this movie has kind of a reputation. People don't mm -hmm. like it. Right. And, I, you know, I go back and I and, and I start thinking about, like, all of the, 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 the different, like, plot holes and just goofy choices and the, the USS Vengeance and just goofy <laughs> stuff. Vengeance. And I'm like... I, I don't want to watch this again because it's going to completely taint the fun I had with it in the theater. So I decided to go ahead and just wait and, and, and do it with you guys and see how I feel about it while we're talking over it. Yeah, I haven't seen it since the one time I saw it in the theaters. Like, You've only seen out. it the one time? Yeah. Is this the only one like that? Yes. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah. Was so, that, were well, you... <clears throat> no, but yeah, I saw Beyond twice at least. Because I saw it in the theater with you and then I saw it with I'm, my girlfriend. And I thought you saw it once even at my house. We probably did. Yeah. So you've seen it two or three times. Three or three times. Yeah. So yeah. when, so Cap, you and I and my sister went to go see this movie. We did. And it was we a lot of fun. Up, mm -hmm. And we yeah. got to the theater right as they were ending a costume contest. The costume contest was over. Oh. And then we walked in there and our co they thought our costumes were so good, they had to find more prizes to give us. Wow. That was pretty cool. Yeah, it prize? was great. Was we got well. I'll, I'll tell you, it was it was kind of it was kind of fun. Uh, I we have we have some of the only. It's a hoodie. <clears throat> we have yeah. some of the only darkness merchandise that exists because they didn't make very much <laughs> right. of it. And uh, there was this like limited stuff that I'm pretty sure the stuff we got you couldn't even go buy. Like yeah. I'm pretty sure they just gave it out at, the, at this thing. I need so, to put um, all of it together. It was the it. first uh, USB. Uh, portable speaker, or not USB, uh, Bluetooth speaker yeah, I ever had. Really. Yeah, yeah they, they gave us a, a, a <clears throat> Into Darkness Bluetooth speaker. It just had the, the logo the on logo. it. And then we got hoodies. What was the logo? Was it like this, the, 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 the cut No, it just out. said Star Trek Into Darkness. Oh, oh yeah. the, the, just, the just word title. The, okay. yeah, yeah, the yeah, title. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, okay. so that's what I meant, the title. And then uh, the hoodies um, <coughs> were kind of cool looking. I still wear mine occasionally. Um, it's a gray hoodie, and it says Star Trek Into Darkness across the, the I think mine's the my sleeve. garage. <clears throat> And my wife uh, used to call it my uh, hoodie into darkness. <laughs> That's funny. 
when they when they handed us the prizes, they handed me the box that they had had some of those things in. So somewhere I have another box that says like property of Paramount Studios. Oh, on that's it. pretty cool. Was yeah. this a regular movie theater? Or is this like... Yeah, it was a regular theater. Yeah, uh, we but, went to the cinema. But we got yeah, oh. but but we uh, we got to see it early because oh. of um, because of Brandon's cousin mm-hmm. who. Uh, Look at that. Because we talked about this last time, but Brandon uh, used to have a cousin that worked at Paramount, and uh, yeah. so Brandon got to see it early with a friend, with a friend of a mutual friend of ours, and then um, it, uh, Alex wasn't in town, so I got to go this time, <clears throat> uh, and, and, and his sister, which which was a lot of fun. And, and also because I, I felt bad for not taking you the first time. Ah, you should have felt bad about it. <laughs> um, but uh, that but that's that's the first time I met uh, Jennifer. Um, who I'm also good friends with now. Oh Brandon, yeah, Brandon's that, sister. I didn't that was, realize that, that was, was the first time, time we hung out. Yeah, uh, and she's I, done. She's done costume work for me now on the channel, and um, yeah, my she's si- responsible for some stuff in Spawn here. She made she made all my capes. My she's sister great. is a costume. Uh, I don't know if you know this, Adam. She's a costume design major, costume and makeup from KU. Right. And uh, she put together her own uh, Uhura, Zoe Saldana Uhura costume for that show. That's what she was wearing. She went to thrift stores all over town and found just the right stuff. And yeah, like, she put did this a really thing great job together. It. it was really great. Oh. I was wearing, uh, and. Uh, a, a uniform from uh, Star Trek Enterprise uh, oh, yeah. that my mom had made. Yeah. <laughs> it was pretty awesome. Uh, but anyway, let's go ahead and get into this movie. So sure. uh, if you want to watch it with us, which we encourage you to do, get out your DVD or Blu-ray, however you want to watch it, get it past all the menus to timestamp zero, get ready to press play when I say now, and here we go. Everybody, please press play. Uh, <clears throat> I'm a little, I'm a little scared to watch this again. Uh-huh. Right, please press play right now. Well, hopefully we can make everyone else's watching uh, more enjoyable. This is yeah. one of those movies that I really enjoy both times I saw it, but it was difficult not to just complain about it. It was right. kind of all I did. I, you I give me did not like I gotta it. I got to fix this I don't know why. Oh, really? You did I not did. like it? I was going to ask you if that's why you only I saw it the one time. Like it was just really disappointed me. Like It felt like it was like really... like I don't know how fan service parts of it were and stuff, but also like... And derivative. I don't know. Did that bug me? Oh, certainly. <laughs> well, yeah, absolutely. And I mean, I had all of those complaints, and yet somehow it didn't kill it for me. And I want to think that this will just continue to be a uh, kind of uh, um, guilty pleasure, right? Before it's anything. But I mean, like, it's going to be hard to do nothing but complain. You got the you got the irritating, you know, triple blood bringing people triple back from the blood. dead. And, cured death. Uh, you, yeah. You've they got cured you know, death. That should we've, break the universe right there. Well, that <laughs> that and taking you know uh, beaming uh, across the galaxy to its furthest right. possible extent, and mm-hmm. this really bothered me. This, this did? opening scene because it was it's. I know. Okay, on the on the original series, Kirk was very fast and loose. With the whole, with the way he treated the prime director, sure, right. but he always offered some kind of explanation or justification, even if it was BS and the most tenuous of <laughs> justification, like like Val and those people. Yeah. Oh, this isn't a real culture anymore. They're stagnant and stuck in this. They're just going around saving people from volcanoes and stuff. Apparently, yeah, yeah. And basically, just really flippant the way it pl- and stuff okay, so it. the way it plays in this is that Kirk is so new and wet behind the ears at, at being a starship, a starship captain, which is why you shouldn't get to be a cadet and then right. immediately a captain, regardless of it's saving the world ship. or right. the universe. Who cares on that? Right. Uh, he, he's, he's not emotionally prepared. He's not, uh, he's, he's not you know, mentally mature enough to, to be the captain of a starship. Right. Um, he fundamentally does not agree with the Prime Directive. Right. That is the character we have in this right. movie. And he thinks he uh, should be a big hero. I know this is going to irritate you when I when I tell you this, but there's an explanation for it in the Countdown to Darkness comics. And well, what, I didn't read what that. they do, <laughs> yeah, no, but no, yeah, but, but what but what I was going to say is what they do with that um, is they have a Prime Directive mission that happens like right before this. Uh-huh. That kind of sets up Kirk doesn't like the Prime Directive uh, as, as a thing. As a thing. Yeah. Uh, and right. it's problematic. Uh, I actually think that, that Mini is a little bit better than the original Countdown 
uh, right. in that it at least it at least holds together better as a story. But it's weird because there's a character in it named Mud, right. oh, who's really? a Bajoran woman. Oh, really? wow! Mm-hmm. And when you first meet her, you're like, "Why did they change Mud to a Bajoran woman? That does, doesn't even make sense." Like, I guess I guess now we have to be, you know. We have to say for sure we're in an alternate reality and not right. just an alternate timeline. And uh, there's one throwaway line that tells us that Mud is uh, actually her father. Really? And so I guess that's not wrong. I, I guess it's okay. Okay. But anyway, I do I do kind of like this pink planet with the. the mm-hmm. but, uh, it's cool looking. Yeah. I loved this opening sequence first time in the theater because it felt like we were going and doing a Star Trek thing. Yeah. And even if it didn't make any sense, like, I didn't even really... I wasn't really paying all that much attention to what was actually happening, because I was just right. excited that we were on a planet, and that we weren't in Earth's solar right, system. Right, right. I was like, oh, cool, we're kind of doing Star Trek stuff. And then, when you start thinking about it, you go, well, that's not what cold fusion is. Oh, yeah, cold fusion. <laughs> Remember that? They're yeah. going to seal up this volcano with a frozen... <laughs> yeah. with, with, with a freezing tool... Right, but it's cold fusion... ...that they call is, cold is fusion. A thing that, it's a, yeah, that's like red matter. That's a thing that... A pseudoscience the, thing from the 50s or whatever. Uh, yeah. Okay, cold fusion, they, they still think it could be possible, but, like, they want room Even temperature... Even if it is, that's not what it is. Yeah, no, right. I know, but cold fusion is supposedly is like fusion at room temperature. This is just like a bottle of liquid nitrogen <laughs> What is that? I also don't mind these away team suits. Yeah, they look pretty, they look decent. It makes me wonder if we're wearing different suits every time we go on an away mission, though. Yeah. Do we not just beam down on a planet anymore? I yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, obviously they're in disguise. I, I, yeah. Because they're they're trying to sort of follow the prime directive initially. Initially. Oh and here boy. Goes, here goes the. Uh, Beaming in progress. Beaming, well, no, they the ship comes oh, up. From no, the they're going right. to swim to the ship, right. which is underwater. <clears throat> and I am convinced that this is only here. So, again, in the theater, a lot of just spectacle stuff that excited me until I started mm-hmm. thinking about it for yeah. any amount of time. The ship underwater thing is cool because we've never seen it. The reason we've never seen it is because it's kind of dumb. Uh, right. The reason, I'm convinced the reason this is here is to satiate fans who said uh, it's it's stupid that the ship was built on the planet. Right. So we go, well, we can we can take it underwater. Maybe we can even land it. Like, right. we don't see it land. But I, I think they were thinking if we show it underwater, people will understand why we built it on the planet. Right. Because it can be on a planet now. And I get, you know, it is stupid. It had been done a little bit in that Voyager episode with the water. I feel like it should be possible. But, but, that, right. but also, it's it's more okay if Voyager... Sorry, Brandon. It's more okay if Voyager does it, because right. Voyager is designed. meant to land right. on a planet. It doesn't look ridiculous like the Enterprise does landing on the planet. The Enterprise well, is... Right. Also, I just don't even buy that it could do that. It's not designed it's for it. It's too fragile looking. Yeah, it's yeah. too fragile. It's like, yeah. And it would be too big, too. Voyager's a small ship. Yeah, okay. yeah, Voyager's exactly. a small ship, but I mean, like even the Enterprise, I mean, as big as it is, I still feel like it could... It could, it's still tiny compared to the size of the ocean. I feel like you could actually use it to explore the ocean. I've always thought that. I think this one is too big. You okay. got to remember that they made it bigger. <laughs> yes. I Which think is... it just looks too flimsy to to but, to exist wait, in a liquid thing. medium. I can buy a story <laughs> where we shields. decide. I could buy a story where we decide we we need to use it for that, and mm-hmm. so we do it. But I don't buy it being designed for that. Like if you sure. wanted to explore an ocean, you'd make something that something different, look more seaworthy, and for the same reasons, you wouldn't want it to be top heavy when if it was just sitting on a planet, you wouldn't right. want it top heavy under the ocean. I wouldn't think. Um, but I mean, what do I know? But that's the first <laughs> thing that comes to my mind. But sure. anyway, um, more importantly. The only there, there's no good reason for it to be underwater except the the uh, kind of superficial suggestions I'm making that uh, they wanted us to be okay with with building it on the planet and maybe that has something to do with it right. and also just because we've never seen it before it, just mm-hmm. this ship under underwater and uh, story wise it's only there so that they can be hiding. I kind of like mm-hmm. their wet suits. And I don't know why they can't just be in orbit. Maybe mm-hmm. there's a line about it yeah, that I'm forgetting, but why aren't we just why in orbit? Because they'd and be able then, to see them. I mean... They, I mean... It's this I, primitive race that, like, they... they like, be a little dot, <laughs> Brandon. <laughs> yeah, or they could just they could just hide behind, you know, you know something in, sure. in space. I, mean, also, I don't, I don't uh, know if they have any moons or anything. This is another one of those instances where somebody would be totally dead, I feel like, standing yes. next to 
Molten the, lava. This, oh, this, has, yeah. this, 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 this has the, the same understanding movies. of lava, not just in movies. This, this, this has this has the same. Well, you know what I'm going to say, right? This has the same logic as basics. Yes, the basics. With From that Voyager. Guy. Yeah. <laughs> Where they're basically hopping across lava. They're hopping across lava. <clears throat> I do feel like that suit, though, could have survived him standing on a still non-molten rock. I don't know about that, Brandon. <laughs> But yeah, What's so, so special about that? So too? we put it underwater it's to hide rock. from these people, and now they're seeing it. <laughs> it's not. Rock. Yeah, they're seeing because it now. Now they're, now they're seeing yeah, it. Yeah, they, now they're seeing it. And yeah, but I think the idea would have been cool? to have. They would have flown gone, it to another part of the planet, and then and, and then, then come, come up. back. Yeah, now they have to get Spock. So well, and and that's what they were gonna do. But like, why we, can't they beam him from underwater? Yeah, and and, and we know that the transporters are working because they're about to beam him from the volcano. So. Yeah. I wonder like, why you couldn't beam him through water. I like the wetsuits. I do too. Well, water's another medium. So I, I just don't know. Well. So basically what what Brandon wants, Adam, is, is Sequest with the Enterprise. You want Sequest, like, Brandon. We should show him Sequest. We should show him some, some Sequest, absolutely. Have you seen Sequest, Brandon? Um, that's a neat shot, though. Yeah. With, Sounds like a jet engine. Yeah, it does. That's true. <laughs> he came in with all the, the space gases suits surrounding. are cool. Like all the stuff, I'm probably gonna praise this for, or just visuals. You know, like, I like all that it. Yeah. You know, and looking at again this, it, the inside. There's, there's of these some ships, other stuff. I there's like, some story stuff. I, you know, <clears throat> reevaluating this. I didn't like it at the time, but I like how this stuff looks better because looks you've seen Discovery. Discovery. Right now. Yep. Exactly. Uh, well, it feels more modern, but it still feels hopeful, and it's not. It still feels positive future. It, and it's not it's, all these. Uh, it's not so gold and blue tan. You know, the, just the color scheme dro- annoyed me after a while. So, and now, because yeah. people complained about the lens flares, we get to actually see it, and we get wide shots of the bridge. Right, I right. Think. They've got pretty good, pretty good visual acuity. Yeah. <laughs> um, they were really good. They, they were really accurate. You, yeah, you missed, yeah. The, you missed the line though, where he's like. He's like, you violated the prime directive. And he's like, oh, come on. They saw us. So Kirk really is kind of fast and yes. loose with it. In, yes. in the original well, series, at the, when they, no, I know. you know, when they leave the, when McCoy, in the uh, piece of the action, when McCoy leaves the, the communicator behind, it was, it's Kirk that brings up, like, yes. what are we doing? You know, oh, what are we going to do? We left mm-hmm. the transdater behind. And then they make an entire Enterprise episode about that called The Communicator. <laughs> Oh, this for a is split the, second, I thought we cut to commercial. And this guy was on Doctor <laughs> Who. Does look like a commercial, yeah. It did. Wasn't he on Doctor Who? I don't remember. I think he was. He was I feel Mickey like I and, and I and I know that guy's name was. since this, I think I've seen both of these actors in something, but I can't remember. I uh, and there there have been a couple of scenes in. This seems too built up. I don't like this. You there have been a couple. Always say that about. <laughs> because I don't believe that I believe I, I've always got the impression that Star in Star Trek in the future that. The Earth is not po- super populated anymore because a lot of people have moved off. You wouldn't, yeah, you wouldn't have seven billion people on the planet right. anymore. That's true. Uh, and you got a lot of aliens coming in. I don't know. You, maybe. And it wouldn't, it wouldn't be built up in the same way because you wouldn't have industry like you I do feel, now. Exactly. Uh, sure. Like, you, That's true. Like, like you would have. I'm not saying you wouldn't still have, have cities. Well, you need and I wouldn't. And I wouldn't say that, that that you couldn't. Yeah, exactly. Like, like I'm, I'm not even saying that you couldn't have like you know clean cities. Right. Where like we're not ruining the environment by building right. big buildings. Um, so I don't mind some of that, but I'm with you. Like that looks like a, a future where you would imagine, you know, uh, industry and the kind of economy we have now and fossil fuels and stuff right. continue. Sure. Right. And even bi- yeah, business. I see that kind of stuff. I mean, I'm totally with you on this, Adam. I, I see that kind of stuff is the beginning of what we have with New Trek now, where we call it Star Trek. We slap that name on it, and we've got uh, the, like like all the, the the tropes and the technologies that you remember from Star Trek, but uh, you, more or less, the society is the same as it is now. Right. Hmm. Discovery and Picard both have that problem really hard. Um, in Picard, we are constantly talking about like buying and selling things, like in Starfleet, like like on Earth. I don't understand that. I don't mi- know what they're they talking about. Did they mention doing it in in on uh, in Starfleet on Earth, or did they uh-huh. mention it? I thought that was uh, they were outside of. No, first episode does it. Huh. Yeah. So I mean, we do it. Con- we act like people are being paid for their time, and it's weird. Mm. Do you remember all the fervor surrounding the release of this movie, and who was Benedict Cumberbatch playing, 
And no, there was no fervor. What I remember is they're lying and saying it wasn't Khan and everyone knowing for sure it would be and then it was Khan and That's then no one was I'm surprised. To, yeah. yeah. Uh, but like people were it was obvious and was we were all adamant true. like it's obviously Khan. And what sucked about it was I hate this hat. That looks like Starship Troopers. I'm with you. Yeah. I, I so I made a video I like about uniform. this. Oh, the uniform is fine. Yeah, okay. um, but, but uh, yeah, I did a video about this at the time, hoping that I would end up being proven wrong, uh, that was called something along the lines of uh, Khan and Zod, how come we can't have new villains? And uh, that same year, we did a new Superman, Right. And of course, all we could think to do was Zod, was Zod, and we do a new Star Trek, and all we can think to do was Khan. Right, right. And uh, the the arguments for going ahead and doing Khan right away are flimsy at best and silly, and I I just I just don't like it. We shouldn't have done it, uh, even if it was a Khan. You know, closer to the one we know, because my mm -hmm. biggest issue with Khan in this is that he's not Khan, which like further confuses the whole "Are we in an alternate history or, or right. alternate timeline issue, uh, alternate dimension?" I should say right. issue. Um, like but they did even, their best to give us the rest of the characters. Why not Khan too? But like, it's just so obvious and on the nose. Where like, for th for three movies, all we can do <clears throat> is homaging Wrath of Khan and ripping off Wrath of Khan constantly. If you're gonna do Wrath of Khan, at the very least, wait one more movie. You don't want your Star Trek. Trek 2 to be the Wrath of Khan again. Right. Don't do it second. That's yeah. stupid. Yeah. That yeah. by itself, I think, is stupid. And just I'm, doing it in 2. Right. Doing it in your Star Trek 2. And if you're going to do it, don't just copy it exactly like... I mean, God, I don't even talk about the scene at the end of the movie. Where they, the but, we're gonna, but we're going to yeah, have to. I, we're going to yeah, talk about that. No, I'm, I'm waiting oh for God. it. I'm waiting for but it. I'm going to bring it up argument, now, but it's not The yet, argument so. from the producers is, well, you have to do that if you're going to do Khan. I'm like, why? Like, no, you don't. You shouldn't be doing Khan. Tell some other story, and they're like, well, it, you know, they, they thought it was clever to do the reversal thing. And then he just and, cheapened it and with, I, with yeah, magic no triple kidding. blood, so it was meaningless. Yeah, it, precisely. If they, if they had actually killed off Kirk in that movie, that's more ballsy, but then if your Star Trek three was searched for, for Kirk, then... Then that's a ripoff, too. <laughs> then that is also a ripoff, yeah, exactly. I like I Pike's uniform reminds me of... Motion picture? Kirk, yeah, exactly. I like that. I remember in the theater... Before we found out about the magic triple blood, you were in awe that they may actually be killing yes. Kirk. Yes, I was. I teared up. Yeah. And then yep. They didn't do and it. then and then they didn't have the guts totally to do it. Totally it right at the end of everything. Um, and... This is the best scene in the movie, uh, dialogue wise. Mm -hmm. uh, I do remember liking this the, the, this scene quite a bit uh, because their Pike is really good. I actually will go as far as to say that Discovery Pike is better, just actor wise. I just like that choice better. Yeah. Um, I like him a lot, but then we, yeah. just, we just got a more traditional Pike in, in Discovery. And if only the writing was better, he's he's wonderful. Right. And he's supposed to get a spinoff series, but I don't buy that any more than I buy the... You think it's they're going to get a spinoff series of, of him? Yeah, I don't buy it. I, I mean, don't know. Any, I, I've any, heard there's calls for it. Any, any more than, 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 than they'll do the Section 31 That's thing. I think, I, I, I think they're just... Though. Yes, it is. But I, I think they're just trying to uh, make Star Trek look more relevant than it is right now by constantly announcing things. Uh, but anyway, so I like th that uh, that Kirk's being rep reprimanded here, and that he's uh, losing his command uh, now because he's, go he's back not to driver's head apparently. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. But when he says like you don't respect the chair, it's like no, that's that's absolutely right. But like they're basically going back on the first movie and saying. Yeah, okay, everybody was right. We like it, it was pretty stupid that he got promoted right right away. So as as good as that scene is, it does look it does make Pike and the rest of Starfleet look pretty stupid for right. letting him have that command in the first yeah, place. They're, they're basically saying, Oh, we made a mistake, obviously. Yeah, and the only reason we made that mistake was because the audience expected those characters to be in those positions by the end of that last movie. So it's not characters making choices. So this is what's his name? This is Khan, but uh, That's cover badge. What is he doing? I don't even remember what exactly he's... He took, <laughs> they're trying he to took save blood this little out girl, of himself. And, and then this guy blows himself up. Yeah, he's transfusing the blood. Yeah, it's something, something Why? trying to rescue the the, the, the Botany Ogment, Bay crew. The I don't yeah. yeah, I don't remember now. And then this guy blows himself up as part of the deal? Uh -huh. Is that the deal? Is that what and I was going to say earlier, the... uh, there, there are a couple scenes in both Discovery and Picard that what look a lot like, like this scene. Colored water? What is this? Yeah. Yeah, it reminds right. me of those yeah. glass globes from uh, from Casper. <laughs> that like that was a Casper. Casper. God, that was a reference. Christine, or I mean, yes, you're right. It does look like that, but I would have thought of that. <laughs> sure, I've seen that movie in 25 years, right now. I, I, have no idea what you're I haven't about. either. <laughs> 
I, don't I just remember, remember anything it. about it. But what were you saying about their scene? Something that reminds. Oh, nothing you? beyond what I said. It's just, it, just every time we no, do darkness. Every time we do like Earth planet shots, <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, where we've got a couple people talking in a room, we always go back to that scene. Like we're all we're always looking at that when, right. when, when we when we go back to the planet. We have like an apartment or something. Right. They always look like that scene. Right, and it doesn't seem as built up on on Discovery. Well, what's Discovery? Was that Hardly jewelry ever... store or whatever it was behind him called Kelvin? Did you see that? Yeah. Oh, and, anyway, I'm sorry. What's that? I was going to say, <clears throat> on Discovery and Picard, it, it didn't seem as built up. Well, Discovery didn't hardly ever show Earth. But, uh... I'm just saying aesthetically... But aesthetically, and, it does kind of look like that. The, I agree. Yeah, color palette and everything. That's all. I, that's the only all right. point I was making. So, this... I can't remember where this place is where he's at we're still in london yeah, yeah but what they, is the like, place freaking, he's at they showed another shot of it where it was like that f- the famous cathedral there Saint, okay Saint so Paul's is like completely yeah, crowded is this like a in. shuttle bay or i forget just what this point is, of fact completely crowded in by buildings and stuff people in london now are like real against building giant buildings they're that's not a good point. Yeah. yeah this is well this is basically government. manufacturing right yes yeah, so i, I like guess i can kind of buy if they're in a manufacturing future that they're kind of built up like that I don't know. I feel like they they you wouldn't need all this stuff because it would be all automated and stuff. Yeah, and the and the other problem is they have their cake and eat it too with that, Brandon. Where mm-hmm. like we said last time, they're they're attempting a balance that they're not striking right. with trying to be both retro and modern simultaneously. <coughs> so they the the, the uh, trying to be more industrial thing is actually, I think, less about being realistic and actually more on the retro side, where they're going, sure. well, there that was so much yeah. piping and engineering and stuff in TLS, right. we gotta do that, but in a more, like, industrial, sort of more modern way. So you see what I'm saying? Like, they're not quite striking that balance. The technology in extrapolating from now is too advanced for them to need to look as uh, industrial and current as they do. Right, and the problem was... I th- they didn't do a good enough job of making it look futuristic in the last movie, in my opinion. They made it it looked no, just like the, any kind of any other factory. I don't think so too. either. But the yeah. actual technologies they have are so much more. Some of them are so much more advanced than That's they true. are exactly. in TOS. Right. That that gets really weird and complicated. Right. Where it's like you shouldn't be able to have the kind of beaming that Scotty comes up with in this, and right. uh. You know, like the like their, their protein resequencing in this is essentially <laughs> the same thing as replicating. Yeah. Right. To be uh-huh. fair, so was Enterprise, but right. And I guess you could wave some of that away. Like we don't really know how the the food slots on TOS work because he never showed it or explained it or anything. Uh, no, that we know they the, had a cook in the galley. That's true. They did. We know mention somebody made that. a turkey. That is true. They did mention that. So I don't. Yeah. Just throwing that out there. Um, I'm going to throw this out. I think that opening scene, this is weird for me to say, I think that opening scene should have been a flashback that took place like a year ago. Yeah. It's too mm. convenient that this is happening just as con- just so that we can have a, like, you know, Kirk, like, like uh, you know, has to, uh, like, take it upon himself to get his shit back and go do a mission. He's not really supposed to be, you know, you know do that right. whole plot. Um, it, it just seems a little bit convenient like a lot of things in this movie it would be maybe better if he's been out of the service for a while so did everybody else get grounded or is it just him right now i think it's just, just him. him and he said spot got transferred, transferred but i think everybody now. else stays on the ship so who's commanding the ship right now bruce is or i mean uh bruce greenwood <laughs> yeah, <Bruce. laughs> or whatever yeah, yeah he said he got the uh, yeah the pike, enterprise. pike gets the pike enterprise is. back is what happens that looked like a motorola razor I think it might have been neat if instead of killing off Pike, because spoiler alert, in a couple scenes he's going to die in an explosion, um, I think it would have been cool if uh, Pike actually got the command of the Enterprise for a while, and if we were going to kill yeah. him off, maybe maybe kill him by, by way of Khan. Like um, Jesus. Especially considering that they have the, the whole uh, Seti Eel homage in the last movie with him. Ah. It might have been cool to actually have him kill off by Khan if he was going to die. <laughs> But, like, have have Pike running the Enterprise and then uh, have Kirk in some kind of, like, you know, side mission also going after Khan or something. You know, and then right. they, like, converge later. Whew. But that's rewriting the movie a little bit. That's somewhat unfair because they, they, they want this to be about uh, Spock and Kirk, 
learning to be friends in the first place and like why they care about each other. Right. That's what that's what the story is, and uh, they they immediately at the very very beginning uh, set up the whole you know needs of the many thing because of course you have to do that because it's Breath of Khan again. Right. And of course that's at the center of a lot of Star Trek stories certainly, but of course they have to say it like that. They have to spell it out that way because it's Wrath of Khan again. Right. The uh, death of Pike. Was probably after I after watching the movie and you know thinking about it, the death of Pike was probably the most emotionally moving thing for me in this movie, just because I really liked him. I liked Bruce Greenwood as Pike. I thought he was great, and I would have liked to have seen more of him. It just struck me as the really obvious thing to do. <clears throat> well, sure. so like I wasn't affected by it at all because I was like, oh yeah, okay. So like we gotta get rid, we got we gotta get rid of Pike so that it's easier to, for Kirk to come back. <laughs> okay, so let's talk about that. <laughs> this this is a very important thing to break down. Okay, the last actual honest to god villain in Star Trek before Nero mm-hmm. is RoboCop, and then the next villain after Nero is RoboCop. It's really strange. So oh, yeah, because so he, was a, he was on Enterprise. So there, there's, he was the so there's, guy that stole that factory that they flew off the moon. He was the acolyte of John Gill. Yeah. Do you remember that? Oh, my goodness. Uh, he runs a terrorist organization. Yes. And uh, of, of uh, xenophobes. Yeah. That wants all the aliens off Earth. Right. And he follows that the teachings the, of John uh, Gill, who was a character that we were told about in Savage Curtain. And... He, not John uh, Gill. Colonel Green. Colonel Green. <laughs> Colonel Green, not John Gill. Not John Gill. Anyway, thank you. Thank you. I'm a little rusty. I forgot. Anyway, but, uh, uh, so I, once again, I don't care how futuristic your technology is. There's, there's <laughs> That's no, ridiculous. There's no way. Yeah, yeah it's crazy. It looks it? like a video Hollow. game. Hollow <laughs> technology. But yeah, you're right. And that was the... What were those people called? I don't know why we cast him again. Because his his character in this, Marcus, yeah. pretty much the same, same guy. Same character. What were those bad guys called? Or at least pretty close. They're called Terra Terra Nova. Terra Nova. Is that, and that what they and, were? Yeah, Terra Nova, and that was the uh, real honest to god finale for Enterprise. If you skip the actual really crappy last episode, it has a pretty good last right, episode. Right. Um, that two parter, especially Archer's speech at the end. Archer has one good speech in that right. show, and it's and it's it's at the end of that because um, like they set up the coalition, and that's all we need, right? Like we know that's going to become the Federation leader. Like, that's kind of all we need. And then when you get to the last episode, uh, he has another speech that he's supposed to give when they set up the actual Federation, and then Troy turns off the holodeck before right. we get to see the speech. But that's probably for the best. It was probably so, the best okay. is it also convenient so, that he comes to the conclusion that this is going to happen at the moment that it's happening? Yes. They, they ripped this scene off from The Godfather Part 3. <laughs> huh. Yeah, and why would you rip off anything from Part 3? That's a bad one. Nobody likes that one. <laughs> oh... Any, anybody else surprised that as soon as this happened, Kirk didn't yell, "Move it, move it, move it"? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I like how the doesn't he pull a weapon out of the wall? He like opens up a little. Ar- he opens up an armory, uh, like spy. I don't know. He's he's out. got a phaser rifle right I know now. He I don't does, know where he got but him. But anyway, else. um, I think the reason I was enamored with this as much as I was in the first place is just in comparison to the first movie. It, it is telling a story, right? And that was exciting. <laughs> Um, it's not a particularly great story, of course, and it cheats a lot at the end, like we were talking about earlier, and I'm gonna like it less going back to it, which is part of the reason I haven't, because, See, uh, right there. Discovery... Oh, he pulls out a, uh, cord. Like, Never current mind. Trek, like, like, Discovery and now Picard <laughs> keep doing these conspiracy stories. It's like, right. all they know how to do is, is just these big convoluted conspiracy right. things. Right, and this is the first, yeah, this is the first thing to start that trend with that Section 31. Yeah, we're, 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 we just can't get away from that. Uh, there's one mention of it here, if you, if you blink, you miss it, and it's not really important that you know what Section 31 is. Right. Um... So, like, I, I mentioned that after this movie came out as a cool deep pull reference. Now I don't think it's that cool. No, now it's just, they... oh, okay, we want to do dark Star Trek, and that's the, that's like, the dark underbelly of the, of the Federation or of Starfleet. So, of course, we can't stop using it. Right. And Discovery is the most absurd. Because they're just freaking operating like a, 
out in the open. Uh, yeah, Everybody like knows about like their own branch of the that's uh, right, Star Starfleet. Starfleet. So yeah, that's the most ridiculous thing. Well, and and uh, they should have just made a mirror universe show in the first place, right? Because they didn't want to do real Star Trek. They just wanted to do like dark and broody, right? Uh, like you know, almost post apocalyptic future. Uh, like, or at least, like, dark dystopian future. Right. Uh, like, so much science fiction is now. And I'm not saying there's not a place for that. Right. I just want some variety, and Star Trek is not the place for that. Right. If you want to do that, don't make Star Trek. Right. You know? We've already got The Expanse. Why do we need that? You know? Right. We've We've already got, um... Uh, I can't remember the name of that, uh, of that show that's on Netflix right now. That's like that. Altered Carbon. Altered Carbon, yeah. We, we, we've got that. Why, why do we need this? Um... Right. So I can't remember if he uh, actually mind melded with um, I don't know I think he with died. Pike I there, think he died but I kind of like the idea, and it's almost unintentionally amusing. Of like, <laughs> oops, I couldn't mind meld you. You're dead. Yeah, I think and that's so, kind of I amusing. That's what Is that what happened? There's a brief moment of shock that appears on Spock's face in the scene, and I take it to mean that he was meld melded with him at the that's moment. That's what I remember died. thinking Maybe in the so, theater. Maybe. Yeah, yeah. And it's, it's but if they don't actually talk about it, that's kind of nice and subtle. Well, he yeah. said, actually, a he great little say, bit of acting on on oh Zachary Quinto's part. <laughs> Maybe he has Pike's Katra. I wondered if that had two at the time. <laughs> but I also don't know if human beings can have katras. Like, can you suck a soul out of a human being? It was the essence, wasn't it? I the essence of... Was. Yeah, yeah <laughs> it is, but the point I'm making is um, Spock was able to pass his contra off because he was, you know, trained in mind melt. Right. Sure. Because he, he he had the mental yeah, I don't discipline. Know if you can pull it from what, what I'm saying is, I don't. I, what I'm wondering is, this is just speculation. Is can a Vulcan take a human being's or anybody else's right. consciousness? I bet they. I bet not. I, I would. I would. I would think well, not. Well, but how about when when Kurt or when when Picard took. Uh, Sarek's. He uh, didn't. Sarek mind melded with him. I understand that, but like and that had nothing to do with his con with his no, consciousness. Not, that was that was his that was, that was his stabilizing feelings. his emotions. That was his, yeah. That's the like like you get. The, Where are they now? Um, what is this? But I think it's all tied together in the same thing. I think it goes both ways. What was that? Was that that interdimensional trans or that? Interstellar transporter. Yes. Okay. Because yes. <laughs> they're gonna beam just just for the convenience of not having to do any traveling. They're they're gonna yeah. they're gonna they're gonna beam all the way into Klingon space. Uh, we set up a whole big like Klingon war here that we're never gonna do anything with. Now I'm glad that the third movie wasn't that. Yeah. Uh, especially after I saw it and really liked it. <laughs> but um, that's just kind of there and. We're never going to deal with it this now. This is the beginning of. I don't the, think we're ever going to get any more of this continuity at all this now. Is the honestly, the beginning but. of the bastardization <coughs> of the Klingons. <laughs> I was going to ask you what discovery. you thought. What you thought of that? No. Um, well, when you see the beginning of it, I don't think we do anything to them here except just give them stupid forehead bridge that, rings. Like we don't really do anything with them at all, right? They're kind of just no, they're, they're just shock troops. They're kind of just fighting. But they like, look dumb. That's it. Sure, <laughs> but when you say. It's the beginning of what we did to them in Discovery. Like Discovery, Discovery turned into a completely yeah, insane, different right, thing. Right, that's true. They not only look dumb. They okay, so dumb. <laughs> let's talk about John Harrison and how, like we were talking about earlier, Brandon. No one was fooled by that. Right. Um, I was looking in. I was looking this up again today, and I could not find any reference to it, which is weird because a few years ago when this came out. <laughs> I, I read some stuff about it, so I can't confirm where I got this because I couldn't find the source again today. But um, when, when, oh yeah, so there's, there's the, the Phoenix, the, the Phoenix the is Enterprise there, the Enterprise, there. Yeah. Uh, and I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure that was just the toy that Art Asylum made. <laughs> I, I think I think I'm right about that. I may not be, but anyway. So, uh, but I, but I like that. I like that all this. Oh my God! He said section thirty one, Adam. Oh my God! It wasn't play, it wasn't Playmates Toys Phoenix from nineteen ninety? No, it wasn't. So. <laughs> that, that was a little nicer. That was a little nicer than um, that. <laughs> if they didn't use the Art Asylum Enterprise, uh, I'm sorry, NX01. Yeah. Not not Enterprise E. NX01. Um, if they didn't use the Art Asylum NX01, they 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 could have because it looked great. Yeah. It would <laughs> it would look good there. But anyway, so um. You read an article. When you see, <laughs> when you see uh, uh, the, uh, the RoboCop say 
um, <laughs> John Harrison's name the first time, you can tell that he said something else initially and that they overdubbed him saying Harrison. When they shot this, it was still in the script and the way they filmed it, a different name. And what I had read was that it was Harriman, which is weird because John Harriman is the Enterprise B captain. Right. And what I had read was that uh, originally um, Harriman had something to do with Khan in uh, some extra material, like a book or something, I can't remember, where like that was like some other name Khan was using in some extra matter. Yeah. And that the reason they changed it was because they got cold feet and were afraid that someone would figure out that it was Khan because of that. Uh. Not because Harriman would... Nobody would have done that. Everybody would have just said, why are you calling him John Harriman? That's the captain of the Enterprise, Enterprise B, B from Generation. Right. So I don't know if that's true because I couldn't find it again. And this is my memory from seven years ago. It's been that long. I saw this... No, right, it's absolutely wild. I saw this right after seeing The Best of Both Worlds remastered on the big screen. Yeah, I remember that. A month before. Yep. And now I think that... Well, yeah, we went to that. was just a month before. I didn't yeah. know you then. It, no, I know, no, I know, I know. But I mean, Brandon and I went to that. Yeah. We were at the same show, I remember. Oh, that's right. You told me about that. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? And we didn't know each other yet. <laughs> Which is ironic because now all we do together is go to Star Trek <laughs> Star movies. Trek's Wait, that was summer. also before we met you? <laughs> yes. Oh, dang. Well, yeah, 13. I didn't. I, um, I was only that. in, in, in uh, my house at that point for a year. Right. I moved oh, into goodness. that house by his old house. In what, 14, 15? The end of 2014, like okay. December of 2014. Oh, wow. I was going to say, I thought we'd finish Spawn Year by the time I met you. Yeah. Yeah. I remember uh, somebody yelled in the theater for somebody else to, to be quiet. Uh, oh, you're friends. Yeah. <laughs> yeah Jim. I wasn't going to name names. <laughs> yeah. Me neither. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> There's a... Marcus. Yeah, Carol Marcus. So this is the another British now. dumb thing about Rathacon. Uh let's let's do Rathacon again and try to tell everybody that complains that it's just the same movie again. Oh no it's not, but also include Carol Marcus for no reason except for the fact that Khan's in the movie. And, and this I do not They don't have anything to do with each other except they're in the same movie. Like I, why are you doing that? This, this actress is not impressive. Uh compared to well, the, she's a completely different character. Right. And she's kind of vapid, and I know. who cares? Yeah. And yeah, uh, I don't know why she's British when her dad's not. Right. And they have this whole stupid convoluted thing where they're pretending, where she's pretending like she's not related to him. And so we're going to find out later that, like, we're going to have a double beat, or not a double beat, but we're going to have a double reveal where, oh, that's that's uh, Carol Marcus, and oh, that's Khan. So both of those characters that we brought in from Wrath of Khan, we have yeah. to pretend like are somebody else and then surprise the audience with them. Have they brought back your favorite little really? green guy yet? No, but he, he's in this. <laughs> What's his name? I can't remember. So these remind me of, like, giant-sized, like... Uh, what's the what's the episode of Voyager where they find the sentient warhead? The warhead? <laughs> yeah. They remind no, they, me there's of... There's a guy giant. back in the back there sitting on it. Like an idiot. <clears throat> Well, that's, that's a little guy. That's a little guy. Yeah, I never figured <laughs> out idiot. what he's supposed to be. Like, why is he around even at all? This is a comic relief. He he was funny, which is hilarious. <laughs> he he was uh, just Scotty's. You know what these things look like? Guy. They look like the thing that that guy launched himself on yesterday and died. Oh my goodness! The rocket guy. I, I, I didn't know yeah. what that. We'll have to think about that later. Flat Earth. <laughs> the flat Earth guy. Trying As always, <laughs> dating the commentary. <laughs> We all do it. It's fun. <laughs> yeah. Where are they at now? What room is this in the Enterprise? It's the it's Tor the missile room. It's the missile room, <laughs> Adam. Uh, yeah, it's it looks the photon. Crazy. It's the torpedo <laughs> room. It looks like a particle accelerator. Uh, are they near the warp? They should be near the warp core. Do they I use the think. the brewery warp? Engine room and this. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's a different shots. set. I think okay. we see it, but they couldn't get back to the same set. If my from memory serves, <laughs> okay. I'm gonna be wrong about that. Was that one movie? It was it Beyond that they actually did build an engineering set. I feel like at one point. So I know we're gonna we're gonna see this scene and talk about it again later. But in case I forget to mention it when we get there, this just reminded me that uh, because Scotty is gonna get uh, booted off here, and then later they're gonna do a. Uh, 
subspace phone call by regular mm-hmm. uh, handheld comms. Yeah. yeah. And that's dumb. So, do they do it on the ship? Or do they do it, like... He's just got a communicator with him at, like, a bar or something. Yeah. Right. And Kirk calls him from the ship to his okay. handheld and communicator. And I'm like, that's not... Yeah. I, can, I can see that. You know? No, no way. If he's he's going to be, like, like carrying, It's like having a FaceTime, you know, with <clears throat> someone over your... From your computer onto their mobile device. I guess. I don't know. It's just... If it's I just feel like, though, in Star Trek, Trek needed... communicators don't work that far. Yeah. Like, I don't know. And I they're not like subspace communicators. Into a network or something. Maybe I, so. Maybe. Yeah. But, like, so those frequencies get... would be monitored and... Did they get new uniforms in this film? Or did they get new uniforms in the next movie? No, it's the next movie. The next the, movie. The, the, these, these are the same. same ones from the last movie. I do like these uniforms. We just see a bunch of different ones for different missions and stuff, which I think is cool. Uh, and now we're going to get the uh, the the stupid uh, romance subplot where she and Spock are fighting. and right. uh, That's no fun at all. I think I was too hard on Chris Pine when these movies came out, too, but I actually like Chris Pine now. Mm-hmm. After oh, Wonder oh, were, Woman you, and... were you against him Yeah, at the time? Yeah. Oh, he's great in Wonder Woman, yeah. man. And then, uh, what was that other movie he was in where he was the bank robber? God, that was really Oh, I didn't good. see that. I wanted really to, though. Yeah, see, we, we can see more of, the, more of the bridge. We can actually look at it this time. <laughs> it's There's still got the guy. lens flares, yeah. but they're not all up in your face. Wait, do they have joysticks like Insurrection? Yes. But at least they oh, don't... Oh, yeah, we see them use them. But at least they don't look like they bought them Ooh. from CompUSA and glued them to a... <laughs> <laughs> Are there more <laughs> lens flares in this than the last one? I feel like there are more. I don't know. I mean, they're 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 not. There's but... lens flares, right? <laughs> yeah, but they're small ones. They're, they're not like they're not overwhelming. So it looks like you're having a stroke. Or oh, something. I, I didn't. I, that's what I mean. Bigger. I just meant are there more I of things them? I see my vision. But yeah, they, they were they were there. It looked like yeah, there's a wide shot for the express purpose of making it yeah, hard to see what you were looking at last time. Yeah, that he's in that room. I don't know what it is, but uh, I guess it, maybe that is the engine room. Uh, he said it's engineering. Like, now they had to, yeah. now they had that was definitely one. engineering, but yeah, you don't launch the torpedo like from engineering. Better. That's true. Light of two. And it looks like it fits on that ship. Yeah, it, like like it, 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 it goes with ship. the bridge. I think they may have ran out of money when they used that brewery. Maybe that was why they used no, the brewery. No, it wasn't. It, it, wasn't? it absolutely wasn't. No, they, oh. they, they, they said they did that because they thought it, uh, again, looked more industrial and like an... I don't know. They could have built something. That was like the uh, that literally was like the Anheuser Busch. <laughs> yep, I know. Ooh. See, she looks concerned because we just had her dad's yeah, name, but we're supposed to not know right. that's Carol Marcus. But like, I I'm pretty sure going into the theater, everyone knew that was Carol Marcus. I don't think that was actually a reveal. I don't if think you it was a reveal either. I think they production. Should, yeah, I think they had publicity photos and mm-hmm. all this stuff. And just called her that because when they because when they gave her that Wallace name in the theater, I remember thinking like, oh really, we're doing that? Okay. John Harriman. John, John Harriman. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, when when uh, Marcus when uh, when Alexander Marcus says it later, um, it's a really weird line reading. Where he's like, it's like John Harrison. So John Harriman is the or, or Alexander Marcus. That's the uh, the Peter Weller. That's yes. his actual. Yeah, he's there. Alexander Marcus. Yeah. <laughs> <coughs> that's a TOS shot. Yeah, that looks good. That's pretty cool. That over the shoulder. Now oh, that's great. He looks like Kirk there. I love that. Yeah. Look at that. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Whoa. And, like, I do like their uh, their, their their chemistry in this. It's uh, just... Yeah. You know, like, like their, their character arc together is fine. It just doesn't require one of them to die and be brought back right. to life. What is her job? She's a weapon specialist. Special. Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah. You know why we did that? Uh-huh. You know why we did that? Because the Genesis torpedo is a, a weapon. Uh-huh. Mm. Why is she wearing a blue uniform if she's a weapon specialist? I don't get that, but uh I don't remember if she's actually yeah. a weapon specialist. 
Oh, well, at least right away we we bring this up. I forgot it was this early. I honestly can't remember. I've only seen this movie twice. I can't remember if she's actually a weapon specialist, but that's what I thought. <laughs> What? Oh, God! Shake the camera! <laughs> oh. Shake the camera, Brandon. Shake it. Oh, emergency <laughs> stop. <laughs> That's a good uh. one. The, the only thing... Yeah, here's an idea. Why, why do we have to put Chekhov in charge? Like, I know he's supposed to be a, 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 a wunderkind, and he's, like, a super <laughs> he's a, genius. He's a Wesley. But, like... <laughs> The kid's like 22 years old. Mm -hmm. yeah. There's got to be someone more qualified yeah, on this shit. Yeah, I feel like there's people down in engineering. Like, Why do we have... engineers that could be... And I know this is a problem in Star Trek a lot, okay? Mm -hmm. Like, I'm not just throwing this at this movie. But how come we have any more crew at all on the ship? Like, there's no need for any of them. Right. Because nobody does anything except for the main cast. Right. Pretty much. That's a good McCoy line. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And 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 we could we could make uh we could make a drinking game out of it and you wouldn't get remotely drunk because he only gets like five lines of dialogue in this yes. entire movie. In fact, you could drink every time McCoy has a kidding. line of dialogue right. Right. and not get plastered. Hmm. <clears throat> uh, that weird uh, alien dude with the with the white uh -huh. people size in, in yeah. the bald head. Um, they do some things with him in the comics. Is he a Delton? No, he looks, he kind of looks like a Delton. I think he's, <coughs> like, part, I think he's like a cyborg or something. Cyborg. I can't remember. It's yeah. been a while. So, we're supposed to get the sense in this that uh, we've actually been on a few missions already. Mm -hmm. And uh, the IDW comics, um... They fill in a they're, lot of that. They're okay. Yeah. Uh, but uh, Mike, Mike Johnson, um, the, the writer of that series, he, he does a, he does a decent job. Mm -hmm. It's cooler at the beginning because the first several stories are reimaginings of TOS episodes. Oh, really? And right away, they do Where No Man Has Gone Before, and they, they do a Trouble with Tribbles one, and they do a Mirror one, which is weird because it's... Uh, that, that's where they make it clear that this is an uh, alternate reality, not uh, paving over the original timeline, uh, because because they, they do the mirror Abrams universe. They make it really clear oh, it's different, really? so it's weird. But anyway, um, it's it, what's very strange. I uh, what's what's very strange about the idea that they've and again not necessarily canonical. It's always it's uh, it's always iffy. But it's weird to consider that they've been on so many missions because at the very end of this, they're going to go, and now we're going on the five-year mission. Right. Like, it's still prequel territory. Right, right. And even at the beginning of this, I got the sense that we were already on the five-year mission. Right. Yeah. And so you read those comics for all those years before this comes out, you're like, oh, we've been on the five-year mission. And they get to this, <laughs> the end of this movie, well, and it's like five-year well, mission. And you're like, yeah. that's weird. And that Look, means there's that there's a torpedo the, shot they uh, kind of ripped off from Star Trek Two there. Yes, <laughs> and then when you get to the beginning of Beyond, you realize that the entire series happens between this movie and Beyond. Wow, we didn't see any of it. Wow, because uh, he says they're like they're either nearing the end of it or they're in year four or five. Right. I can't remember. And and remember he's got that great line at the beginning right. where he says like it's become episodic. And they're not on it yet. They get on it at the end of this. So that means the whole series happens between two movies. Right. So, this is Kronos. Yes. This isn't some random Klingon planet. Okay. Maybe it's a random Klingon planet also called Kronos. I mean, there's, there's precedent well, for that. they spelled it differently. They spelled it K-R-O-N-O-S. No, no, no. No, that's the English spelling of Kronos. Oh, okay. Yeah, there's precedent for that. Well, I've seen it spell Q, usually Q that's... with English lettering. No, that's the uh, phonetic, Klingon, phonetic Klingon. That's the phonetic Klingon right. spelling. So, um, a capital Q is yeah. a is a particular Klingon mm. character, um, just spelled in English, right, so we can right. read it. Right. Uh, but when you spell it in English, it's spelled right. that way. Yeah. Right. No, I'm not going to give them crap for doing that. Uh, Adam, were you ever around for the Klingon language lesson of the week? No. Sarah had a whole a whole bit in Star Trek. Yeah, we used to do that. In Star Trek she used Club. to do. K 
Ketha province. Wasn't that reference in something else they mentioned that a second ago? That's a DS9 thing, is, is I think? Is that DS9? I think? I don't know. Maybe it's DG thing. I don't remember. Yeah, I don't remember. Multiplied exponentially. Spark talking about his feelings. That seems odd to me. Well, it's not because... Well, it's it's because Uhura is kind of forcing him to in the scene. Yeah. But he's <clears throat> supposed to be more emotional these days because Vulcan exploded. We're still doing that whole thing. Yeah. Sure. And I... Uh, Sorry, then, it's only been... A, it, it hasn't been... Has it been that long in this time frame? I can't remember... Well, I mean, I don't know how long they've been out, but I mean, like, even if it's been a year or two, it's still... The, 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 oh, idea, yeah. is, the idea is supposed to be that the destruction of Vulcan is a major turning point for this character, where for, from right. now on, he will always be more human than the original Spock. That's... Right. That's supposed to be the idea. <coughs> sure. Whether you like that or not, that's what they're doing. And in the uh, Countdown to Darkness comics, they make him uh, almost suicidal. So Abrams just ripped himself mm. off when he did <laughs> when Force he's like, Awakens he's with like, this exact same <laughs> yep, scene. That's right. <laughs> but see, nobody ever says that about Force Awakens because so few people saw this movie. So it did badly? Oh, yeah. Yeah, oh. It, it, didn't, it didn't perform real well. Really? I mean, I think it had an okay opening weekend, and then, like, word of mouth, it kind of fell off after that. Oh, okay. I, I would have to look it up. I don't remember what the actual oh, numbers okay. were. I remember it being considered a failure. Okay. But I didn't I didn't look this up. My phone's not close. I remember... I certainly remember Beyond was considered a failure. Well, it, it, it was, yeah. Yeah. Um, they screwed themselves. I mean, I think there was a lot less interest in this franchise after this movie because people didn't like it. Right. Uh... It took too long to come out, just like this did. I want to talk about that in a minute. The four-year gap was a problem. Right. But also, uh, they screwed themselves with that teaser. Remember that initial teaser with the Sabotage song? Yeah. It got panned hard. People were so angry about it. Right. And then when that second trailer came out and said they looked like a Star Trek movie, and, and you know the three of us were like, oh, well, then maybe there's something here. Right. Um, a lot of people didn't even bother to see that trailer. Right. And they didn't have the advertising budget that they had for these first two, so I think a lot of people even going to the theater and seeing movies just didn't even see that trailer. Right. So that hurt them real hard. And now they've taken so long to do any follow-up to that and stuff, you know, it's just no point anymore. Well, it's time for another for another reboot, yeah. relaunch, whatever you want to call it. It's It's complicated now. Because, like, whatever we do now, I would want to go back to original canon instead of more of this. But original canon is so muddled right now because I don't want to count New Trek as part of that. So it's, it's it gets really complicated. Yeah. Um, I don't love the design of the Warbirds. No. I remember reading a magazine nope. article about how they did this scene and all the uh, effects, the green screens they had to do and what they had to do to kind of build this scene up and... Is she wearing tie dye? What is that shirt? I don't know. It's weird. Like it's kind of cool looking, but she's on a mission, so it's weird. Why is everybody gone from the Klingon home world? Where is everyone? <laughs> and where are we right now? This isn't the Great Hall, is it? No, it's. I don't think so. Some random place. Oh, okay. Don't say wrath. Just don't even use that word. It's the Klingon Forge. We're, we're in your Star Trek too. Never utter the word wrath. So, if they had left that scene in, on <coughs> Urapente uh, in 09, we would have seen these helmets before. Uh, so, it is weird introducing the Klingons like this, because we're supposed to have seen them already. So, they would have shut... Okay, so th they just... They reused their design from that deleted scene. Well, they had made a bunch of helmets for that scene, so I imagine they didn't have to do a whole lot. Like, I think they it's just had those helmets laying it around. In there, right? Yeah. No, they should have left it in. It was a big mistake. But yeah, it's those helmets. She's speaking good Klingon. I guess it's ruins. One one of the only things New Trek consistently gets right is they pronounce Klingon correctly. Right. 
I don't know why they they think it's so important to make sure to get the language spot on, but not the culture. They're not interested in that, but they want to make sure that we speak uh, uh, Klingon right. Right. But what about uh, Discovery's Klingon? That looks like Tony Todd. Yeah. Is that Tony Todd? I don't know. He has a really particular way of carrying his mouth. That is Tony Todd, friends. Hmm. Yep. Well, it's cool he's here. Mm. I did not remember that. But d- d- I'm right, aren't I? I, I don't that, know. that is definitely to, to know. That's up. definitely Tony Todd. I don't have any internet though. Um, but did you think that they do they pronounce Klingon right in Discovery? With yes. All the yes, that's why, and they they pronounce it. Some of that's it's so overly pronounced. Yeah. That it sounds goofy. Because yeah, technically you're supposed the 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 the, uh, the hard s's. Technically, you're supposed to pronounce them that way, but nobody ever does because it sounds kind of silly. Right. So, like, it's practically an SH, like a sh sound. Oh, really? But they, they do it so hard in that show, it just sounds stupid. Right. It's overly done. I feel like Uhura should have gone with, instead of telling the Klingon that he's about honor, I would have gone with something like, he doesn't care who he kills, like, you are also in danger. Sure. I, I, it was already obvious, even before he start, started shooting, that this guy doesn't, like... It, it would have been obvious to them, being that they're on a chase form, that he's just armed and dangerous to anybody. I think there's some change, just for the <clears throat> sake of change stuff, that, that, like... I get, like, updating technology and things to some degree and extrapolating from now. We've talked about that. There's two sides to that argument. Why change the Batleth? Right, there's right. a sword. It should like, be why? Fun. If you're going to have it, this is, everything's creative license. It's like we have to always put our own spin on it. And I don't mean to be a broken record, but like I said in the 09 commentary, if you're going to do that, full-on reboot. Right. right. Don't confuse the issue like that. Just full-on reboot. And then I don't mind that so much. Right. But it's like, this is ostensibly su- supposed to be the same timeline we knew just paved over. And then, with Khan, we're going to have the big, huge issue of... But I thought in rebooting out of original continuity, the idea was that everything changes after a particular period of time. Right. But this Khan is a completely different character. Right, why is he different? And he's not just differently characterized. The history is different. Right. He's described as a genocidal madman. That's not Khan. Right. Khan was a benevolent dictator. Well, he did kill a lot of people in the wars and stuff, supposedly. But once they went to war, but they made it sound like he was just a psychopath? Like, Khan's, right. not a, Khan's a sociopath, but he's not right. a crazy person. Right. And not, in that, not in the way that they kind of make him out to be here. Also, he changed and became white all right. of a sudden, too. Right. But again... If you're going to straight on reboot, that's whatever. Right. But they didn't. So. <laughs> now, I don't know why your name would be Khan Noonie and Singh if you were a Caucasian, you know, pasty white guy. Yeah. But. But whatever. Now, do you think that they chose Benedict Cumberbatch for this role because he was the hot ticket yes. that time? Yes. Absolutely, that time? I do. Yep. Yep. They picked him because <clears throat> they, they wanted a bad guy with a cool sounding voice, which is the exact same reason that they got the next villain. Yeah. Yeah. But at least that was an original character, so they could do whatever right. they wanted to with them. With uh, Idris Elba. Right. Took me a minute. Um, this, I, I guess I'm, I'm, I'm talking about a scene before we get to it, but uh, one of the silliest things in this movie is uh, when everything stops and they try to make a big reveal out of the fact that it's Khan, even though, mm-hmm. again, I think right. very few fans were actually I'm surprised Khan. by that. And he goes, I'm Khan! I don't know why immediately... Oh, yeah. Everybody doesn't like run to a computer to look that up and find out who that is. Right. Um, yeah. It's really silly because like that name wouldn't mean anything to these people, and it doesn't. They don't know who that is. Right. Um, but also, that's a fairly common name in Star Trek. Right. Like Khan and Sing Singh is not the only person with the name Khan. Right. And there's a lot of and people. I would have said my whole name. Like I wouldn't say Khan. It's a common like, name in. Now in yeah, it's India, clearly it's like the, breaking the fourth wall for the audience, yeah. right? Yeah, it's just for. The, I mean, it's not breaking the fourth wall, but it's just for the sake of the audience. Like, right. like, like he he just does that because the name of the movie we associate with Khan has the word Khan in it. Right. That's the only reason we did that. Um, Khan wouldn't refer to himself 
uh, in by just his last name any more than than like uh, you know any U.S. president would or Hitler would right. or like does it, like is 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 that a is that a narcissistic trait? <laughs> is that a narcissistic trait? Where like look at me, I'm Hitler. I think you'd say your whole name, right? It's kind of weird. <laughs> <laughs> if I walked around saying hi, I'm Grim. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. And and that shows that oh, this is the scene that that, sh- that shows everybody that you're like a, a total narcissist, Brandon. Yeah, right. Because not only do you refer to yourself only in the third person, but only by your last name. I'm Phil. It's weird. Moore. And what it, <laughs> and what it sounds like in the scene is like they know so little they don't even realize he has more of of a name than that, or that right. maybe maybe they think that's his first name. Now I realized later we will get his full name. But that's how it reads the first time you see it. Now, if he had said, I'm Harry Mott, I would have lost my mind. I would have been like, wow, well, that's a different take. That's a, that's a choice. I'm, and, th- and then you could stop everything like that. I'm Harry Mott. Right. <laughs> like, what? This thing that he's in kind of reminds me, if I'm not mistaken, of, of the thing glass? that they kept Loki in. Was it Loki that they yep. held in the... Yep, it's yeah. it's a lot like that. That was just a year earlier, so they couldn't have been influenced by that. Hmm. Is this is he in a glass room? Well, is that a force yeah, field? I no, think if you remember, they put a hole in it. Transparent so aluminum. They, uh, they, re- remember how... Uh, later, we'll see Bones put a hole in the glass so he can stick his arm through and take the blood. Yeah, I hate that line a lot. I just have a tough time with Kirk saying things like "end you." Yeah, <laughs> this is too over the top, friends. Mm. I'm genetically engineered, so that's not good. See now, I, now I want, now I just want uh, Khan's voice to be uh, Marvin the paranoid android. So is he wearing a Section 31 uniform right yes. now and stuff? Yes, he is. Which is funny because that's essentially the same uniform that Kirk had for a minute in the last movie. That's and true. It was not a Section, Section 31, 31 uniform. uniform. Wait, why is the why is the star backwards? Because he's really? evil. So evil? Opposite. Oh, that's <laughs> nuts. That's so dumb. I don't know. <laughs> I, do you put that past them? I don't. They got a ship called the Vengeance yeah. that's like a Constitution class looking ship that's ten times bigger than the Enterprise. Right. They're going to do that nonsense. Right. And we haven't gotten to the Vengeance yet, but I've been wanting to say this, so I'm just going to go ahead and say it. If you're going to if you're going to be that on the nose about it, it's like Khan... Look what they've done. <laughs> okay, that's really built up. Khan, yeah. Khan is a... Yeah, it's like we didn't change anything. Khan is a... Uh, character that we remember about being all about revenge right. because he had that one beef with Kirk not anything I mean I guess he's got a vengeance thing in this too right. but like so we gotta go as far on the nose as to call it the USS Vengeance right. why not just why not just go all the way if you're gonna be that silly and call it the USS Wrath just right. call it the Wrath <laughs> right <laughs> that's hilarious so this is when they call him yeah this yeah. is when he's about to get that like phone call him. I don't know I guess that's somewhat of a nitpick I remember that really bothering me in the theater though uh, his friend has a stupid looking. Oh, see, he's calling him on his communicator. Yeah, right. and I guess I mean they could be networked into the Earth comm system or something. I don't know, but yeah, uh, maybe so. It's but just they're all we're the so... way out at, at right. Klingon space, right? But they could be using the ship's system. I understand that, together. but even subspace communication takes a little oh, bit. Oh, they show it on, on that. I'm not going to go uh, because they. Sh- they do that. They break that all the time in Star Trek. Also, well, like four, Kronos isn't that coming. far away. Right. No, no, you, sure. No, you can you can call somebody from Kronos I mean, they to Earth. Did it on Voyager with their little magic boost thing. Well, yeah, but the they had to the have season. a thing that boosted it. But, right, but, no. but, but no, <laughs> Brandon, with subspace, unless there's some kind of interference, anywhere on the Alpha Quadrant, you should be able to make a real-time phone call right. to anywhere else in the Alpha also, Quadrant. Also, these communicators look mm, like those... I, uh, or like at least not anywhere doing... in the Federation, I would think. Maybe not yeah, the maybe. maybe not the whole quadrant. No, do you remember, you know what those communicators look like? Do you remember those next telephones that pe- they would like do the walkie-talkie thing and people would like they would make that push weird to noise. talk? Yeah, yeah the yep. push to talk. That's what they look like. So the way uh, that Orsi and Kurtzman talk about this is really silly. Uh, we're in in their interviews about this movie in the Fifty Year Mission. They talk about how 
they wanted the audience to wonder if Khan was friend or foe. And I do appreciate that Kirk and Khan have to have an uneasy alliance <laughs> later and that they have to work together for a minute. Yeah. But the problem is the movie is advertised clearly as whoever Benedict Cumberbatch is, he's the villain I know, of the he's piece. He's on a freaking poster, so, like, a, like a bad like, guy staying in the uh, ruined giant hole. It's been too long of Star Trek movies always got to have some kind of bad guy, some kind of like single faced right. bad guy, that no one is duped by that. Right. If it only works if it turns out that he's not a straight up bad guy. You can't make me wonder about it and then not and then not subvert that. The last right. time that they didn't have like a baddie like straight up what what was it? Star Trek 5, I mean, Cybok was the baddie, Five but still he was counts kind of misguided. with Cybok, you think yeah. He, you think he okay. And no, 4 was the last time. 4 was the last time then, yeah. 6 is a little bit better because it's at least a group of people. Right, but it's a group, but it's still got Chang General still Chang. Has a, it's, it's, center... it's still the face of it. Yeah, yeah. it's on the poster. Um, every single TNG movie does it. Yes. Um, and the only TOS movies that don't are uh, 1, one f- and 4. And 4, exactly. The uh, advertising... Is this the scene where she gets in her undies for no reason? Yes, she's got change... And he's going to turn around and he's going to see her in a brown panties and then the internet is going to freak out about it. Why does she have to change? I don't remember. <laughs> the The advertising for this movie, specifically the, the burning hole, reminded me of the advertising for that Batman movie as well where they had the, uh, yep. the, the bat symbol in the burning hole. No, there was a whole meme about that. That didn't just remind you about that. No, yeah, they ripped, there was, the... yeah, okay, they ripped look, it Look, Brandon, off. there's the dumb glass windshield Yeah, yeah, yeah okay, yeah. Transparent, to but no, not Brandon, transparent they, aluminum. They, it shattered they clearly, my glass. They clearly just straight <laughs> up stole that from the 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 uh, from the Rises post. Yeah, that it cracked like I think it was it. Rises. <laughs> yeah, or yeah, was it Dark Knight? Metal can crack. Not like this. That did. Maybe it was a Dark Knight poster. <laughs> I can't remember. It was one of those. I think it was Dark Knight. I think it. I, I, well, Rises was the year before or, this. I mean, I think it was I think Rises. It was rises. Yeah. Uh, that's what I meant to say. No, but I want it to be your fault so that we can have another subplot about how you're all too young to be in the positions you're in. Right. You know what? I like this bridge more than I ever used to, too. Yeah. And now McCoy is going to have that weird line about Gorns giving live birth even though they're uh, reptilian. (laughs) Really doesn't make any sense. Yeah. You guys with me? That's kind of weird. Well, I've seen... I swear to God, there. I think there may be some reptiles that You've actually... You've seen the C-section give, on reptiles? No, I think there's some reptiles that may to this? give life kind of weird. Birth. I don't oh, know. Oh, really? Okay. I don't know. Right. I swear to God, I've seen like a okay. snake being born from another Again, that also born. counts as a nitpick. But maybe just, I'm wrong. But in a movie that's just kind of sloppy with, with its plotting and a little bit careless yeah. about stuff like that, it stands out in a way that it wouldn't... Like, if that line was in Beyond, I wouldn't have even noticed it. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? They did the, they did more location shooting in this than yes. they had in a while. So that's nice. That's nice, at least. <laughs> what do you mean in a while? They've had one movie. I mean, well, even I, before that, I mean... Enterprise did a little bit in four. Uh, but to be fair, none of the TV shows. No, did I'm, a whole I'm lot talking of about the movie. Oh, did the they movies. do it in Nemesis? Okay. I mean, they did Nemesis the Argo was scene, but all that was on it. a stage almost. Yeah, man. like yeah, Insurrection. Uh, in, insurrection. Then was probably the last thing where they went to Napa or whatever yeah. and filmed Napa. Oh, that they went stuff. to the auto parts store. <laughs> They went, to like, you know, they went to, like, Big Bear. That's where they <laughs> went to, to, to that lake and stuff. Auto parts. <laughs> what the heck is that? Now I want them to shoot an Orville at an Avis. Is that Jupiter? Okay. <laughs> okay, so giving us the exact coordinates is stupid. Like, I realize nobody knows what a star date means. But why do they do that? Like, remember, remember how I told you that there was, there was a cut of the first movie where they put yeah, all the star dates on the screen? Then, right. That makes more sense than giving us the exact coordinates of a place. Right. So, is that the only time they give us coordinates in this movie? Yes. Uh, I think maybe they did it in another couple places. I forget. But I don't know well, why they're doing that. There, there is a point. He, Khan does give him the exact coordinates, so I think that they're telling us that they've place? arrived. 
Right, but we know that he's going like there. He's gonna... It doesn't do anything for the audience to have that on yeah, screen. Yeah, I'm going to do uh, a... <laughs> what is it called? Not a cold void, Starburst. Uh... <laughs> the other one. The other one. Yeah. The bad one. You're not supposed to do... No, no, the, the, the Starburst is the bad one. Yeah. The Starburst is the bad That's one? That's the bad one. Uh-huh, okay. Yeah. Do it says vengeance. I'm gonna call it the raft from this now on. This ship is absolutely huge. By it's so dumb. It it it's so. If you're gonna make a ship that big. Yeah. Why is it shaped like the Enterprise? Yeah. That's well. <laughs> oh, uh, Jaeger loop. Yes, the, the Jaeger, Jaeger loop, loop was the other one. Yes. He's talking about an episode from TNG called the First, the first Duty. Duty. For any Starfleet officer mm-hmm. is the truth. Well, scientific truth, or historical truth, or, or personal, or personal truth. truth. You can't find it yourself to. Re- to you re- don't deserve to wear, to wear that, that uniform. uniform. <laughs> okay, look at that tunic that he's wearing. Can we do a whole commentary? Or would you do that? I like. Look, that. it's like yeah, scrubs. Yeah. It's great. I like that. And that is also just kind of a, kind of a throwback to uh, motion picture. Yeah. It's a motion picture uniform with texture. Three hundred years old. So I will give them... How would they know that? I mean, his body is still biologically 30 or whatever he's no, I No, be. I'll give them that because uh, even Enterprise has carbon dating. Like, like can you, you carbon, can carbon date, date someone date that's they have, biologically I'm that just, age? Yeah, I mean, that's not probably the right term, but we can take a scanner and scan an object and say right. how old it is. So why I guess you he, do could that do, with well, he could do that, yeah, because he didn't travel through time... He was frozen. No, he in was frozen that whole time. Yeah. So I guess he did. It's age they, they very would, slowly. They would be dating. They would be yeah. dating. Yeah. Okay. But they could I even date could. the material that he's in, right? And I'll... say this thing is three hundred right. years old, and that would have actually been smarter. Oh, is he gonna do it? I'm Khan. Hasn't he already done that? Did he already do? Yeah, it yeah, yeah. He, he already, oh, he already he said it. it. Yeah. I thought they hadn't said it yet. Oh, maybe. Oh, yeah, maybe this, this is, is the scene. Right? I thought, this I thought he had dinner. No, this is it. So it's been a year. Yep. His true identity. And just the way he holds his mouth when he says this, this is so goofy. Just look at him. Oh, oh okay. Yeah. And then God. everybody should... Oh, like, God. Like, and then we just we just stand there for a long time and Kirk should go, Sorry, what? <laughs> or like, how, why am I supposed to know what that means? Yeah, what is that? Oh, this is so awkward. It feels like he's talking to a caveman. This is really awkward. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Why? <laughs> um, what I was going to say is, one thing I either. will give How this movie... I know anything about that? Is I do appreciate yeah. that with the alternate timeline, it's not the Enterprise that finds the Botany Bay again. That's sure, okay. I do like That's that. Good. Like it should be found by somebody else, and I like that it is a. Di- I mean, it's convenient that somebody also happens to find it. I guess, but it's nice that, uh, especially because all this TOS stuff is happening like years before it would have, because Kirk's not supposed to be in command yet. Right. So like, this is all like several years earlier, right? But I don't know what the ex- exact start date is, but it should be earlier. But. Um, I do appreciate that uh, finding that, that after Marcus finds Khan, what he decides to do with 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 Khan and his um, and his friends is directly related to and because of what happened with Nero. Right. That the whole point is well, because of threats like that, we need to become more of a militarized organization, right. and so like. I don't mind the initial thematic idea of this movie that it's, you know, uh, supposed to be against over-militarization and modern cynicism, right. and it's saying that this is what... It's trying to be against what you might think a modern Star Trek would be. The problem is it's also it also feels too much like that. Right. And then Discovery makes it worse because then later on, because of, because of this, they make exactly that. Right. And so that's really irritating. So, like, doing that story is okay. It's like, that's all we can do now. Picard right. is also about that stuff. Right. And Discovery wasn't about that stuff until people complained that they didn't understand what Star Trek was. And then they just started, like, saying the word hope every episode and hoping right. <laughs> that uh, it would feel more like Star Trek to people. Right. But 
But that was the other thing that I really hated doing right out the gate after 09, was that, you know, a lot of Star Trek fans were concerned that, uh, you know, somebody else like Abrams swooping in, they're going to try to make dark Star Trek. The very next thing you do is put dark in the title. Right. Oh, come on. Right. Don't do that. Even if that's the story you're telling, don't do right. that. Right. Uh, the, the title is the dumbest title. Into Darkness. It's, and no colon. And what I, does it mean? And I think <laughs> it's... Yeah, and like, is it is it a command? Is it telling me to yeah, trek to into darkness? Tre- you know, Go but, do but that. only trek. Through the star trek. Star trek. Star trek into, into darkness. Wagon train to the stars <laughs> into darkness. darkness. See, here it is. There it it's is. so... <laughs> So big thing is and hideous. absurdly so. And it's ugly. Really. It's deflector well, dishes as and, big as that in the cell. And I think that's supposed to be the point. To to, to be fair, just to play devil's advocate <laughs> and give it what it's what it's uh, right. trying to do. It's saying like this is perverse Star Trek. Like this is right. like we know this is not what it's supposed to be. That's the point. But how do they build this secretly? It's not your father's Star Trek. And, I don't know. Now. They did do crazy stuff like that on TNG where they had, like, giant Klingon birds of prey and stuff. Yeah. But, but still, this is just ridiculous. Uh, but also, Section 31 is a covert operation. Why do they need a giant ship? Like, I don't yeah. even know what the point of the giant ship is. And also, it it speaks to Abrams, once again, obsession with Star Wars. Right. Where, like, giant his bad ships. guys gotta have... Uh, a big, a, a big giant super weapon right. like the Death Star, and then what does he do? He goes and makes Star Wars with another big giant Death right. Star. A giant ship. Now, you know they are a secret organization in theory, but uh, as we've seen in Discovery. <laughs> Well, yeah, but then they have that throwaway line at the end of season two where they're like, here's a big list of things that people aren't supposed to know about in later Star Trek mm-hmm. that we want none of you to ever mention. Yeah. And that's their explanation, is that nobody mentions those things. the exact plot of the, the history of uh, Skinner, Principal Skinner on The Simpsons. Yes. It, where yes. he was the... <laughs> but he really Armin, was like a... T- 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 what is it? Tarzani? It really was like a... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we shall never mention this again. <laughs> Yeah, um, except this was this was even worse because it was a laundry list of it. It was like, so uh, don't bring up Section Thirty One. Don't, don't bring, bring up the Mirror drive, Universe. Don't bring up Discovery. The, 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 the Spore Drive Discovery they and the big and the big one, the big fifth one is and Burnham yeah, as a perk never Burnham mentioned her existed. ever. She never existed, <laughs> and that's why we've never heard of her. <laughs> we've explained it, just like we explained how oh. The holographic <laughs> communicator didn't work, so we just ripped it out. I'm sorry. And I'm that sorry. Was it. I'm sorry. Did did Rom write <laughs> this show? Oh dear. <laughs> <laughs> brother, why does he keep calling him son? Why don't you put my Star Trek show, brother? You should beam a torpedo on their ship instead. That's a good idea. <laughs> you know what I'm surprised we didn't do there? What? I'm surprised we didn't put him on hold and have a conversation while his head was still on the screen. Right? <laughs> I'm kind of surprised I we didn't I gave you the that. kill signal. <laughs> <laughs> I gave, that was Why the kill signal. Why is everybody wearing go- welding goggles? What? Oh. Okay, so you remember how on the last commentary... There were two answers to every question. <laughs> this is retro. But Scotty never wore welding goggles. Very, I don't remember. No, but they had <laughs> a lot of stuff in the in the movies Ooh. to be in the TOS movies to be fair that made it look more like right. you know you were on like a submarine or a, like a like a combat right. vessel. That's true. It's like how in Star Trek V, they had like a more TNG-looking bridge, and then in the very next movie, when Nick Meyer came back, they changed it back and made it look more militaristic. Yep. <laughs> how far are we into this movie? We're, we're, we're like the halfway, halfway But you know, uh, Adam, at least it's not like Picard, where we had these like new silver uniforms, and then for no reason whatsoever, we went back to the uniforms 
than we had in TNG. Okay. Yeah. I don't know why that would ever happen. I want to know why the Enterprise is kind of bobbing back and forth here, and so is the Vengeance. Did they go of... back to the Enterprise in TNG? Yeah, yeah. When, when, when we go when we go to Earth, they're wearing the uh, or, or oh the, yeah, yeah. The, the Voyager DS9. They're they're they're, they're, uh, or they're very similar. They're very similar. Yeah. yeah. But that's what I'm saying. Why would you go back to that color scheme? Okay. We've never done that in anything. Like they did that just to, just to appeal to people who were excited about it being a TNG thing, right? right. Like that's why right. that's why they did that. I'm pretty sure that a ship being shot at at warp in their warp trail is just it's going to ignite the plasma yes. and it's going to destroy that ship completely. That, person, that was like the, that was just like Brand, uh, Jason's favorite shot in Star Trek. Yeah, yes. in that room. yeah was there a Wilhelm <laughs> scream there? I missed it. <laughs> She's got crazy eyebrows. Yeah. She's got like scary, angry eyebrows. Uh. And they got thrown out of warp, and they're right next to a planet. Like they should have crashed. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But like they don't, they don't care about this. It's funny because the producers will talk about having like scientific consultants and stuff, and I'm like, well, those people laughed all the way to yeah. the bad. Sure, yeah. They're like, oh, <laughs> we'll we can take do your this, money, and we can yeah, do this. Yeah, it's do like, it. oh yeah, no, care. it works. It's scientific. No, I'm sure they wrote him a five-page essay about why they couldn't they do that. They did the it window. anyway. Right. <laughs> oh, well. I got paid. You know, you, you know, I bet this conversation happened. I bet they were like, okay, so we're going to have Khan. He's a big, scary, genocidal, evil madman, bad guy guy. Yeah. And the a big thing that that he's never Uh-oh. had before she's trying to fight her way out of the transport why is it going so slow why, yeah why is it's it really going slow. so slow oh god <laughs> that was Did so dumb her? she was like whoa <laughs> that, that's the part where he goes John Harrison yeah. it's weird go back and watch that it's strange yeah, the transporters are inconsistent did you see that uh, there's a guy that's on the other ship and he looks like the captain that got Dabbed in the last movie on the Kelvin. On the Kelvin? Yeah. But yeah, um, I bet there was a conversation, Brandon, where uh, they were like, they're like, okay, we got this big scary bad guy in Khan, but what he's never had before is a big giant scary <laughs> ship. And every bad right. guy, like they got all their lessons from Nemesis. Every bad guy has to have a big giant scary ship. So we better build the sure. vengeance. Let them live, not let them die. Yeah. And, and see, they got a scary black bridge. Yes. And here's the thing. It makes... <laughs> and a giant it gun. It makes Marcus... <laughs> Look at this all this over-the-top stuff makes Marcus way less sympathetic than he should be. Right. Because he's got a point. If your weapons take that long what to is energize, his, you his, his, what his, his initial idea is... Because of what happened with Nero and losing Vulcan, mm-hmm. Starfleet has to become more militarized. Ah. He's got a point. They, they could, like, like, like they, they could. See, that's the guy. He, he, <laughs> and, and, and I don't mean he has a point in the sense that, like, that, like, I condone what he's doing, and <laughs> they should make Starfleet right. a, a, totally overly militarized. But he could be a bad guy with an argument where you could understand how he got there. Right, right. And I uh, like, like, he's just misguided and he's going too far. Right. But he just seems over the top and mustache twirly. Right. For no reason, especially when they kind of make Khan the same way. Right. So this time, they've got two overly simplified bad guys with confused motivations. It was mostly empty. Well, I say that. I mean, I don't know that Khan's motivation is confused. He just doesn't need to be as like evil as he is. Mm-hmm. He doesn't need to mush a guy's face to death. Right. Which he will do. I don't know if you guys remember the, the smush face, oh, the face smushing. The guy that, but there is face smushing. I think right. called Robocop. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes, I think, I think it's ice, Robocop right? he does so it too. So they stole that from... Uh, yeah, he, he, like, a, like a melon. <laughs> like, yeah. Like, yeah, that's from... He like, Gallagher killed him. Like, <laughs> he Gallagher killed him. Kind of like well, the, that would be with a sledgehammer, but you get my point. Kind of like when they put that guy in that thing in Insurrection. Oh. Yes. <laughs> yeah. The worst CGI ever. Or, or I guess I could say they, they Halloween three seasoned of the witch dip. That's what they did. What is this? 
whole area. Where are all these bridges? I don't know, but one thing it's got over Star Wars is they've got a railing. They got through railing. That. That's good. They have OSHA compliance that they have to advise. Although on. they're not very OSHA compliant when they get into that room where Kirk's gonna uh, kill himself. No. <laughs> and, and Brandon, I don't know. I don't know if you remember your whole complaint about I that do. room. And I do. Like when we get I'm there, you gotta talk it. about that. I've been thinking about it the whole movie. I was like, oh yeah, this whole thing. I like that he bears his soul here and is this vulnerable as fuck. Right. What he should say is, Spock, you need to get in that chair because it made more sense for you to be captain in the first place. Uh, yeah. I mean, you could say with the whole his being emotionally compromised thing and he's kind of lost himself after the destruction of Vul Vulcan that maybe that's not the case, but then is he any more... Uh, would would it make any more sense for him to be uh, the first officer? <laughs> like, right? Like, no. If he could be a first officer with his experience, he should be the captain over Kirk. Right. Okay, so um, <laughs> it's a dreadnought. Blast. I was gonna say, uh, Brandon earlier was mentioned that that uh, that missile from Voyager, which was called Dreadnought. Right. Oh my goodness. It was, was it, it was. Yes. But yeah, the big problem with the role reversal later where they'll do the kill Kirk instead of Spock thing, uh, isn't just because it's kind of silly that they would have some of the same dialogue and all of that. It's that it's there because Khan is here. Right. We're not just bringing uh, Khan back for a movie. We're, 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 uh, we're redoing Rathacon and just reversing some things and saying, look how clever we are. And it's just very silly. Triple blood. I think the other big big mistake in doing Khan this early is that is that four-year gap. Mm -hmm. I, right. said, I said I was going to talk about that. We had to wait four years to do the single most obvious possible thing you could do. I swear to God, fans might have accepted it more if this movie came out two years after the last one. Sure. Right. If this mo if, if Darkness comes out in 2011, people go, okay, it's cool. So but maybe in 13, they'll do something more interesting. Right. So it exactly. came out in 2013. 2013. So, they waited yeah, four that, years. Wow. And, uh, and, and I talked about this last time briefly, but in case you missed the 09 commentary, I'll mention this again. Um, apparently, according to the 50-year mission, the reason... That they the one of the main reasons anyway that they waited so long. Some of it apparently was debating for like a year about whether or not to use Khan. Right. So that's, wow. that's weird. I, I wish they'd landed on don't do that. <laughs> but uh, but the other big thing was uh, like I talked about last time, they were uh, trying to get Star Trek more popular in foreign markets, uh. and so they thought they needed more lead time to get. Uh, other countries interested in the material because they were afraid they couldn't sustain the franchise if the because the last movie did really well but if it didn't do better in foreign countries they didn't think they could sustain it uh. oh we're about to get the uh, we're that nemesis thing again yeah. we're gonna jump across oh, ships oh that's what they're doing here yeah you know what Beyond had besides a lot of things a lot of other things we could mention What's that? over over these first two movies. It had big, cool, grand spectacle things that I legitimately had not seen in Star Trek before. Oh, certainly. The way they blow up the ship is really cool. Uh, With, like all those mini, apart. those like micro vessels that all tear it apart. Tear it apart. Uh, I'd yeah. never seen that before. Right. Um, this I not only have seen, but two movies ago. Right. Yeah. To be fair, it had been a decade, but... Uh. <laughs> I, I don't care, though, Adam, because it was two movies ago. That true. makes it worse, <laughs> right? Yeah. Was that, like, the only, the only recent, remotely recent material you have to look at right. was ten years ago. Right. And you're, you're like, maybe... That. They maybe didn't copy it, but they're running the risk of looking like right. they did. How come nobody's picking up Scotty's communicator... On yeah, the no ship kidding. or anything, but I don't. They're not looking for it, but like you think it would set <laughs> off some you sort of would, alarm bell. It would set off the alarm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a bunch of places where that doesn't happen <laughs> before and after, constantly. 
Yeah. But it's fine in Enterprise because they didn't even have Red Alert in Enterprise. Unauthorized until Weed Alert. The Weed Alert. <laughs> <laughs> I, re- I wish they would have called it Weed Alert. I know, it would be great. <laughs> Is he eating his phone? Yes, he's eating his communicator. It's a communicator. It's very advanced futuristic technology, Adam. Hey, Brandon. Yes, Ken. Are you enjoying this movie? Um, I'm enjoying talking about this movie. Oh. <laughs> it seems like it's very going slow. To me. It, is, it is really going slow. Honestly, you guys, honestly. this is the slowest feeling. I mean, I mean, like the slowest feeling movie we've had since motion picture. I to know. Me. So they were just oh nine, like, just like they were pretty much sucked out an airlock. There's absolutely that's blown out. <laughs> <laughs> yes, blown out an airlock. I'm totally listening to you, Brandon. I'm listening. They, they were blown out an oh, airlock. Oh, now it's like Wally. Look, this is <laughs> well. Here's the thing: is that there's Wally. They, Wally. <laughs> they are blown out this airlock, and they are going perfectly towards this other vessel. That is not what would have happened. You would not That's want your belt. door to open like that. You'd want to get out of the. Ooh. You'd want to get out there. Get in That's like he was doing triage on himself, <laughs> and then it. shoot Turn yourself again. in that direction. But you would not want to be blown out an airlock. Yeah. That's a good point, Brandon. I'm sorry we talked over half that. But then Wally came, yes. came on it. We, we, we had to we had to flip the channel back to um, the darkness because yes. we were looking at Wally for a minute. Oh, oh that's nope. no good. Yeah, no good at all. You don't want that to happen. I want Kirk to say, "Damn it, me," because <laughs> he's Jim. I was like John Cena. I was gonna well, say that guy looks he's enormous, man. Uh, Looks like Bane's stun double. Like, they should have him wear those dumb security uniforms that they wear in the with that crazy helmet. Yeah, it was a helmet. <laughs> yeah, so they had the little Starfleet logo. Yeah, on them. <laughs> I've always wanted to cosplay that. You did do that. <laughs> I want to get that made. You guys, then, I think they, overall, they... I like what this movie looks like better than the last one. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. It does have good. Uh, Costume design and stuff, I think. Well, and I just mean like the way it, the way it's shot and stuff, yeah. like the cinematography on the bridge for yeah. all the reasons we talked about earlier. Right. Like, it's it's easier on the eyes. Right. It's a little easier to look at. And we were complaining that it feels slow. It's not an issue of pacing in the scene. It's not the way it's being it's being uh, filmed or even cut. It's just this script's not great. Right. It's just this. It's just this story. Right. Um. And it and, and it feels kind of padded. What is all this debris from, anyways? Do they say? Uh, I it don't remember exactly. It looks like broken exactly. ships. Because, like... <clears throat> I just wanted to mention that, because I could see somebody leaving a comment and going, well, okay, you, you talked about how, uh, like, the, the last movie is kind of too fast-paced and a little bit vapid in storytelling, so how can you complain that this feels too slow? Right. And it's like, well, it's more involved in the story, but it feels really slow because I'm not invested the way I want to be. Right. Unless that's not your reason for complaining that it feels slow. I don't know. I just felt slow. I, 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 <laughs> you can't even articulate it. You, I can't even articulate it. it. It just feels slow. You're, you're just surprised that we're still so, here. I'm surprised we're still here. They're only halfway I don't, done. I don't care how fast they were going. They were only going at the speed in which the uh, decompression happened of the other airlock. So yeah, they wouldn't have I, picked up any velocity. I, yeah, I don't believe that they could have cut through this extra air rushing I mean, the out only, of this ship. The only velocity that they could have picked up would be from the gravity of that giant ship potentially yeah. accelerating their bodies a little That's bit. Maybe, so, yeah. yeah. But like they would have been that air coming out of the air of that airlock would have not allowed them to enter. I just wish Khan had... We had contrived a cool way for Khan to remain an ally for most of the rest of the story. Right. I wouldn't even mind if he turned on us for some like really good reason at the end. Oh, here's our but, obligatory old spot. Yep. And that's stupid. The, yeah. the, like, the, like, pixelated, like, we gotta reveal his face thing. Yeah. You know what that reminds me of now? Reminds me of... You know what I'm gonna say, right? What? Uh-uh. Adam? No, you, you won't know about this. Okay. But um, but the, the the reveal of 1701 at the end of the first season of Discovery, it's like that. Like, oh, one, yeah. seven... Remember how stupid that was? It's like that. <laughs> Except that, that was dumber than this. But, mm-hmm. yeah. 
So they like I don't know, I'm trying to even remember they how that happened. They won't stay on deck through. That, that was, was, the, that was the hanger. <laughs> <laughs> a hanger door. I'm sorry, what was it? In Discovery, so they did like on the uh, on the screen, didn't they? It was like one seven. Okay, I forgot. I completely it's blotted so stupid. that from my mind. It's like it's like really every time a ship shows up, you got to sit around and wait for the lottery numbers to come yeah. up. That's really the dumb. Balls coming down. Yes. Yeah, they can't. It's still. It was pixelated. just for the reveal. Yeah. Fix your cell phone. <laughs> Fix yeah, your like, bam. Okay, why is that that bad? But we had a perfectly clear signal. Going from Kronos to the bar He's on Earth. On New Vulcan, wherever that. Well, is. how much farther <laughs> is that away? So there were. Now I may be misremembering because it's been so long. But but what I remember at the at the time was two lies being fed to us yeah. um, before this movie came out. One was that that's not Khan, and right. the second was that Nimoy was not in the movie. Oh yeah. He said that Khan was the most. Dangerous adversary the Enterprise has ever faced. Uh, that's maybe not, that's not exactly I accurate. I mean, I mean, like, what about the Doomsday Machine? Yeah, <laughs> it, well, it does it not count because it's a machine. I guess instead of a person. Oh, he beat the crap What about the whale probe? Whale probe. <laughs> it's pretty dangerous. Huh. Uh, but I hate that kind of really like vague writing. You know Where it's what? like, is, is Spock's not really telling them anything. He's just saying, like, well, my day, Khan was terrifying. He, and he also says things that aren't exactly true about Khan, but anyway. That's what I found on YouTube the other day that we should do a He Made Me Watch on. Oh, man, I can't wait. What? William Shatner's Tech War. Oh, yeah, that was a short-lived <laughs> TV, TV show. TV Have you show ever read the book? It. The book is wonderful. It is? I'm sure Shatner had little to nothing to do with it. Yeah, uh, it was ghost written. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> read... The, I've never read past the first book. Read the first Tech War, everybody. It's okay. great. Yeah, it's excellent. Um, I've always been too scared to watch that TV show. I remember watching... Like, and the isn't pilot. Shatner the main guy in it? He, no, there's another guy that's like a younger oh, okay. guy. But he's okay. like the... the the corporate owner that's going to help this guy clear his name. Or okay, crazy, it makes more but... sense that he's playing that role. Now, I've not read that book in probably 15 but years. I remember but... seeing like, that pilot like when I was a kid. Because wow. I had just gotten into Star Trek, and Captain Kirk at that was... time was my favorite. Uh, and I was like, oh, I want to watch this. William Shatner's in it, and uh, this is really, really boring. I found out about that later after I read that book. I didn't even know that existed. Yeah, <laughs> it was on like USA or something. Yeah, <laughs> it probably had six dollars budget. It looks so ninety. It is really bad. I mean, this bridge is so over the top, man. Mm -hmm. It's black. They have it in dark, oh, <laughs> dark mode. Dark mode. <laughs> they, so they wouldn't change it on okay. their de on their settings on the desktop. <laughs> it reminds me of Death Star Tech. Okay, can I can I pitch you guys something? I just thought of this. What's Tell that? me if I'm crazy. Also, keep in mind how over the top some of this is before you say that my idea is too over oh. the top. If thematically the idea of this movie was supposed to be somebody thinks that. Like over militarizing Starfleet is the way to protect. Me. It's the it's the protection mm -hmm. versus freedom thing uh, that we get in Winter Soldier and a lot of the Marvel right. movies, right? What if you had a character? I don't know who it is. Like mm -hmm. I'm not gonna pitch a, a a villain from TOS, but let's say you had a bad guy who uh -huh. had somehow been to the mirror universe and decided they got it right, and that's what we should do. Uh -huh. hmm. Yeah, they could have done That's that. a better idea than this, right? A little bit, yeah. Because the, the Mirror Universe is a big thing that people like Maybe and know about. they should about. have done that with that stupid Lorca character in season one of the That's, Discovery, that's so exactly what they should have done. Yeah, the, a big surprise that he's from the Mirror Universe, yeah. Uh, don't you think... Ooh. Whoa. And then you there put... You oh, here, uh, here it comes, yeah. Here oh, this sucks. <laughs> I hate this so much. Why did we do this? We get it, he's strong. Oh, I don't know, we didn't, we, didn't, we didn't need that. Nope. That her screaming like that was in the trailer. Hmm. That's weird. I mean, to be fair, that was her dad. Yeah. Um, Your hands should have so much blood on them. Yeah. Your body should have so much blood yeah, on it. Yeah, there's blood everywhere. There should be so much blood everywhere. Yes. 
Z Gallagher. That's what we're going to call that from now on. <laughs> Gallagher. They did that on Game of Thrones, and I stopped watching the show after I said it's so gross. I'm not saying you couldn't earn that. I just don't think they <laughs> did. Like, they're making no, such a big deal out of how like, super strong he is because he's genetically engineered, and I don't want to go too far into the whole like uh, uh, selective breeding versus genetically engineered thing, but right. like Khan doesn't need to be that overly strong. Right. Uh, it should be more about his intellect than anything. Like, yeah, he's still like a physical specimen. If he was that strong, Kirk wouldn't have been able to fight him like he did in the that's true. space seat and stuff. But see, this is a different person. Uh, yeah, that is true. That's the fundamental flaw here. <laughs> Which is, and again, I'm a broken record, but that's why last movie should have come right out and said the Reboot. reason Spock Prime didn't try to, yeah, or the reason <laughs> Spock Prime didn't try to fix the timeline is because he knows we're in a different one already. Right. Just say that. It's an alternate universe. And then you can do whatever you want to. Now, I'm going to think it's kind of weird that you saw off rebooted that it's way. It's like parallels. Because, because I like the idea <laughs> of everything past a certain point is different. But the last movie would lead you to believe that everything prior to Nero is right. the same way that it mm -hmm. was. Right. And this doesn't watch like they're, they're thinking about any of that. It watches like, well, we, we, uh, we rebooted, so now we can do whatever we want to. Like, no, you got to think about that stuff. Right. If you don't want to be beholden to any continuity, you have to full reboot. And I don't know, it's just, like, Khan's a really interesting, somewhat sympathetic character. And yeah. this guy is just another... Hey, look, he did it again. Baddie. Why is he talking like this? I don't know. No I, idea. And, like, I've seen Cumberbatch in other things. He doesn't, he doesn't usually do like his that. mouth like that. Doctor Strange, Doctor Strange isn't like, like, like I'm gonna move my hands in a circle <laughs> and walk through a portal, you guys. <laughs> you guys can't see what I was doing, but... <laughs> But it didn't seem like he had any shields there. It was like yeah, all so blowing like... explosions. <laughs> yeah, 6% doesn't mean a lot of it got through. It means that your shields are still up. Right. They just haven't dropped yet, but they're right. about to. They're about to drop. Well, that's a really good point. Oh, there we go. So he did beam a torpedo aboard. Did he... <laughs> 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 so they killed all his... Really funny. So they killed all his buddies. Spock? Yeah, and he's supposed to be sympathetic because he has friends in torpedoes that died. <laughs> not like, supposed to move her when her leg's broken like that. Why can't they just meet her at the transporter room with the stint? <laughs> Who knows? Yeah, good point. Or whatever, but he's yeah, going to wave over her leg like, to make it better. Right. <laughs> it feels like we just teased the audience with the, like, five minutes of cons helping us for a minute. We didn't right. actually do anything with that. Kirk Did, didn't build any kind of new appreciation for Khan, like... Right. No, and in fact, we got exposition by old oh, Spock, bro. Spock Prime, saying, you know, he'll he'll stop at nothing to destroy you if he if he wants. <laughs> and then wow. he immediately Look at that, does lady. it. Look at her. He immediately that's, tries. That's a crazy... Yeah, exactly. Where it's like, just after we've been told maybe we're supposed to be thinking about trusting this guy, which we can't because his face is on a villain poster. Right. Spock Prime shows up and goes, he's the evilest, most evil, evil thing we've ever seen. Right. See, there's a lot of... Like, Spock, he's not Mojo Jojo. <laughs> Why do you well, think Khan is Mojo Jojo? There's interesting background characters in this show, if they, and if this, in this movie, if this was a TV show, they could uh, not explain them and then make uh, until the episode where they kill them off. An entire episode. <laughs> until they kill them. In them flashback, yeah. immediately after you were in, in an episode with that guy's dead. Yeah, they could do that. I'm sorry, we're talking <laughs> way too much about Discovery. <laughs> but there's a reason for that because this is reminding us. That oh, you're you're right. This feels like it's setting all the seeds for the stupid stuff. Like much more so than the last movie. Right. You know, that's how I'm going to start describing that. Discovery is Star Trek Into Darkness, the show. Right. <laughs> except way worse than this. Right. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Whoops. Oh. You know, I want to make a like super Titanic. cut of all the screams It's like Titanic movie. when the people are fall rich people are falling down it's the exactly side of the like ship. It's exactly like that, yeah. <laughs> 
It's like, okay, we get the symbolism. <laughs> we get it. They're falling <laughs> from their high See, perch. they shouldn't have made a giant hole like this thing in the middle of their shit. Right, yeah. no kidding. Why, Why do they do it? It's not Star Wars. It's like, so that you can drop, so that you can cut villains in half and drop them down it. That's why. Not that they're going to do that here, but uh, that was built for Darth Maul. That's right, why they built that. Completely pointless So thing. that Darth Maul could drop Don't fall it. down it. Yep. Why does this exist? There's no reason for this to exist. I mean, <laughs> I mean, see, seeing our heroes run across the wall is kind of cool. Yeah, that's cool. Whoa. I like, that. I like actually Paris. doing anything that? with gravity, or Brandon. Or like, like, it's, kind of a, it's kind of a problem oh, they're in, back in, the brewery in a lot of Star Trek that we yeah. just don't have the budget to do anything with gravity. Certainly. So like, we don't start really playing around with gravity until like Enterprise. Yeah. Did you see the nuclear beer? They had nuclear yeah. beer in those. Dist- That's <laughs> yeah, don't don't puncture that. Yeah. Unless there's a board queen and then you puncture it. <laughs> Data! <laughs> <laughs> Resistance is beautiful. Oh boy. Do you buy that Kirk's this strong? He's not as strong as Khan. Um, I'm gonna say I'm gonna say gravity <laughs> is still wonky and that's why he's, why he's able to do that. that. Yeah, but now they're floating sideways. How about I don't, or maybe, maybe that's not? What I don't is? know what's happening. Uh, yeah, I don't either. I can't tell. But yeah, Brandon, uh, it's always silly in like TV yeah, but now and, they're going that way and Voyager and stuff, where they be like, life supports offline. Yeah. But the gravity, gravity's never, always never flying. Goes it goes off line. Never goes offline. Yeah, it, it never goes until offline. Star Trek Six. Yeah. Star Trek Six does it, and then you're like, oh, that's right, we have gravity in in, in we, we we have artificial gravity in Star Trek. I forgot all about that. Uh, and then Enterprise finally finally plays with it with like the sweet spot. And then season three, uh, you have the anomalies where you'll you'll have there's that there's that great thing in the first episode of season three where uh, they've got the um, they've got the cargo bay with the cargo that's like flying back and forth. Mm. Or is it an episode where Archer's in the shower and it turns off? Yeah, I mean that was always goofy because so many people should have died. Right. Like there's no way they should have been able to navigate the the expanse. Like there's right. no way. <laughs> The Delphic Expanse. Did you ever watch any of that, Brandon? Uh, the the Zindi stuff. Uh, I've seen a few Zindi episodes, but just just club in club, stuff. yeah. Okay. <clears throat> I enjoy that stuff. I mean, it's got a lot of problems, but I still like it. At the end, it's just too much, though. That last episode with the Zindi, and they're on it's that crazy. ship for an terminal amount of time. But you know. Degra is a legitimately likable character. I like Degra. But the uh, just the part where Archer's on that thing and it's going towards Earth. I'm like, this is... I'm but, bored now. <laughs> but there's a great episode where they go to the Zindi homeworld right. and, they, and, they, and they talk about the avians. Right. And uh, like and that like, stuff's all really cool. Yeah. Uh, and it, remember they, like it opens with the sphere builder. Is this when you uh, die? Uh, lady like talking to herself. Yes. Where, like they're, they're all the same. They all look the same. And yeah, yes. it's great. Is he going to die? This is where he goes into All right, basically tell us about the warp core. What you're core. talking about, Brandon? Yeah, go ahead, Brandon. He goes into the warp core here, and I just don't buy that he wasn't immediately killed by all of the radiation. Well, I mean, Spock he, does it. Spock too. is a Vulcan. Yep, yep. And he that's, is that's a good superior point. strength. That's a good point. I and buy it when Spock does it. I also, do not buy he that survives. He gets this far. Also, keep in mind that. Kirk's got to climb up all this crap. This is a huge yeah. engine. Yeah. Spock walks into a tiny room and he's he's in it for maybe two minutes before he's in an exhaust port. For goodness' yeah. sakes, and he he does get affected by it right away, but like, yeah, he doesn't have to do very much before he he kind of collapses. Why don't right? they have any, like, like backup batteries also, or anything? Like with what? the fact what? that <laughs> with the fact that gravity's been wonky all over the ship, we are now free falling towards Earth. the. The uh, planet. No, why is he but not Brandon, I thought you had a whole argument about I, 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 what this room was for. Well, th- this is, my, and the, the way this is set up is stupid. This is I, I, but the I way this is set up is said. stupid. Number one, because you know your dilithium crystals are all the way in the middle of this freaking chamber that you would have to get to. You would be irradiated beyond your wildest dreams. Uh, but also, when he's trying to restart the engine here, the way he is jumping on this. You would think that they would have, this was my argument, you would think that they would have some sort of gyroscopic adjustable like joysticks in engineering to reset yeah. these things. And that I realized sense. that it got jammed and it got stuck. 
But I thought but you had something. Watch him like when he jumps this on this. Even work. And I can't remember he's, what it was. He's jumping on it, and he's jumping on it. It should be pushing it down. That's what it was. It that should was, not. That's, it, he's that's going to push it over, yeah. and he's jumping on it to push it down right now. Yep. Yeah. And that really bothered me in the theater first yeah, time I saw put this. Yeah, <clears throat> Exactly. And we're supposed to somehow. But this is why I said. I wish that they'd had some sort of like joystick that maneuvered this thing instead because you're not going to get in there to realign your dilithium crystals like this every time. And Whoa. that should have killed him. The warp core is back online. It's operating. But He's see, dead everything man. has to be like dialed to 11 and so much more complicated and huger mm-hmm. than uh, the movie they're ripping off. Right. Also, without their shields so and deflectors, they should have absolutely burned up in this right. atmosphere already. There it goes. They blew up. <laughs> no, those are thrusters. Those are underneath thrusters. And now, with incredible damage to the ship, they are able to somehow, once again, Be, navigate... Air, airborne? Uh, yeah, navigate an atmosphere. How do you feel about the thrusters under the... They, and they use That's that always been Beyond, interesting too. to me in this version, but uh, I'm <laughs> kind of okay with it. If the ship's meant to land like that, if the ship's meant to land and be on Earth... Especially if it's meant to land, right. yeah. I think it's kind of <coughs> weird that we don't see them use it at all in the first movie, but then right. I can't think of a place where you would, so maybe it's fine. And then we use yeah, similar running. ones Gotta in the Yeah, running! Gotta have a lot of running too. in these movies! Abrams loves running! Watch Lost, man. Those guys, yeah, Abrams, Lindelof, they love running. Lindelof, by the way, uh, co-wrote this, and uh, I think some of the dialogue in this movie is better than in the last one, so I gave Lindelof a lot of credit for this. Um, but then, watching it again now, I'm not sure I should have. Um, the flood the whole like, compartment. Yeah. Like, I, like I, I, do, I do still think that there's some, you know... There's some nice writing here and there, but like, man, all that concept. But they didn't so put any radiation burns on his face or anything. Nope. <clears throat> he just looks like he's hung over. So, <laughs> once again, I'm I'm gonna sound really repetitive when I say this, but the reason this reads hokey to me, with them having the same initial dialogue as they do in Wrath of Khan, is because it's not a full-on reboot. Right. Mm-hmm. So you can't oh you can't homage in the same way. It feels really contrived when the same characters, like, 30 years before that happens. Right. It doesn't matter that it's the same situation. These are different people. Right. Why do they have the same lines of dialogue? Right. And Orsi or Kurtzman, one, I can't remember which, in the 50-year mission, uh, answered that complaint, and I think in a really silly kind of BS kind of way, and said, well, if, like, like if you're going to do this scene, you have to use that dialogue because... Uh, anything else we would have written would have seemed really generic. I'm like, well, that didn't stop you for a lot of other things in this movie, right. first of all. There's a lot of generic writing in this. But um, but they, they said, uh, well, you would have complained that the writing wasn't as good. And I'm like, no, people would have said the same thing that they did with this, which was, just don't do the scene. Right. Just don't do this in the first place. Right. That's a mistake. Now, I still say if they had actually killed Kirk here, it would have made it better. Right. Like, if they had actually let him be dead. Right. Even if they did do the search for Kirk in the next movie. But then I want that movie to be called that. The search for Kirk. <laughs> I do. If you if you kill him and you bring him back in the very next movie, it has to be called The Search for Kirk. Then own the stupid at that right. point. I also wouldn't be yeah. as irritated about all of this. Yeah, see, the whole point is supposed to be like... You know, I, I have been and always shall be your friend. Here they're going, okay, we are friends in the first place now. Unfortunately, you're going to be dead, so we're not going to get to actually be friends. Right. And that's supposed to be the cool, clever difference, I guess. And why it's a different story. But, like, I also wouldn't be as annoyed by this if, again, the last two movies were also Wrath of Khan again. Right. Mm-hmm. You get to do that once. After you kill off Data at the end of Nemesis, I don't care who is replacing the former the former producers and writers. Mm-hmm. You you don't do this. Right. Sure. Does Spock ever, does somebody yell Khan in this movie? Yes, right here, and it's this so is silly. when they do it? Okay. I was trying to remember. Yep. 
And if you thought this was a great emotional scene, it will just completely ruin it right here. Here we go. This is where it turns into parody land. And a lot of fans said that the problem with this was... Well, when Kirk yelled Khan and Wrath of Khan, he was pretending. Right. But this is the real. Yeah. That's goofy. Was that the giant ship? Yes. There was a real problem with scale in this movie. Throughout, you see things in different scales. Right. I had a problem with how big the dilithium chamber was. I had a problem with how big the, you know... They're talking about how it's, you know, two times as big and three times as fast. Well, it's bigger, but I not. I think it's larger than two times as big. And then in other shots, it doesn't look that big, comparatively. I see, it's coming in. Did you see the guy that looked like he was wearing, like, a Romulan t-shirt? <laughs> <laughs> Are those flight attendants? Yeah, uh, those are <laughs> those are cadets. Uh, That's what the cadets were wearing in the last movie. But they weren't wearing stupid hats. So yeah, this yeah, brand they new. Were they they were stupid hats. Are you talking about the red? The, 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 the red, red people. Or yeah, did they yeah, just they were wearing Alcatraz. Hats. I think they had the stupid hats. I think that was Alcatraz. They it just... might have been this so, brand new state of the art ship is now crashed on. They put in this San Francisco shot... Bay. This is so much. All these people died. They put the shot in the trailer to make you think the Enterprise crashes. Yeah. And because look, they just show the just silhouette? They demolished right. these skyscrapers. This is a lot of people dying. I know. I forgot how many people died when this ship crashed. The ship is insanely huge. Yeah. And everybody keep in mind, this was also the same year as Man of Steel. <laughs> but at least somebody says, <laughs> like, all these people died. <laughs> yeah, that was a lot of collateral Sulu damage seems fine in that with movie. It too. Sulu just had this look on his face, like just another day at the <clears> office. <throat> we just all these people died. So look, he's the one survivor on this gigantic, huge ship. Right. There's nobody else left. Remember when the Zindi killed all those people on Earth, Adam, and everybody yeah, was really sad out. about it? Yeah. That's basically what's happened here. Remember when we spent an entire season mourning? Right. Where's the rest of the yeah, crew of this gigantic ship? He's going to slide all the way down. Look at that. Yeah. He's going to slide straight but down. But here we got, like, no compassion at all. I guess you have to destroy an entire planet for anybody to be choked up about it. Or destroy Orlando. Maybe people don't care about San Francisco. I mean, if you're making <laughs> Abrams Trek. In Abrams Trek, it only counts as people dying if an entire planet is lost. Right. There's that emergency. <laughs> oh, <laughs> the oh I forgot lab- about this scene. Underwriter's laboratory is warning. Do you see how much faster Spock beamed than Carol Marcus yeah. running across uh, the bridge? Uh, uh, and you exactly. can't say she beamed slower because she was moving. Because, yeah. A, she wasn't even walking yet when the beam started. But, B, we saw people running and beamed last movie and it wasn't like that. Okay, so Spock beamed down. Running. He's facing the wrong direction. And then run, just, run, run. He, he makes a sharp look. To exactly the point where Khan is. Yeah, just that's true. They're doing the bat run. Why did they do that? Yeah, because it's dramatic. Uh-huh. He had to crash right. He crashed through the glass because he can. He crashed through glass, then he's immediately outside the building again. How are they going to get that giant ship out of there? Oh, look, it's cars. It's future cars and buses. Didn't notice that before. I guess on fall. roadways, the San Francisco trolley is still apparently operating in the three hundred years later. Yeah. Okay, Kirk's been dead long enough that his revi- his revival should. Who not is that? Be. What is that? It's a med. What are those things? Oh, he's going to be revived what, by what are, what are those Khan's things? blood can do anything. They're med bots. What are the apparently. things behind him? It can repair Those brain tissue. Guys. I don't know, man. <laughs> I'm watching the same movie you are. I don't have any like, more information. You, you bring a person you back to life were. this late oh. in the game, it's turning into a horror movie. They look like the same, uh, those those guys that, that were standing around Krypton. With the little Brandon, you're making the mistake on. of thinking that this Star Trek is science fiction. Yeah. Yeah. A cryo tube. There's your future car. I wonder if it can also take off. There's a Blade Runner car. Everybody said this was all too Blade Runner-y, even from the previews. Yeah. Okay. This so is... now we're going to get this big giant fist fight with Spock and Khan. Because you got to have, have, have that on top of a thing. Yep. yep. Yeah. 
Well, there goes your weapon, so melee combat. But if they had Khan just take a phaser blast and keep on coming, I would not be surprised. <laughs> well, sure. But, of course, this fight also has to be between the two stronger characters. Look at it. He's resisting Khan the nerve and pinch. Spock. See? Yeah. So if you just phaser blast into the face and he just kept coming, like... They should try to put him on that's not too mode movie. or whatever and he still keeps coming. <laughs> Yeah, do you have any sense of Khan's physical weakness in this movie? No, he's a Superman. I feel like he could do anything you want him to. He's like, General Zod. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he should just take flight. off and start, and start flying he right now. He should just fly. I wouldn't be surprised by that either. Okay. He he's should have telekinesis beams from skull, Superman too. Skull. He's mind melt. I want to take over the planet thing. Houston. <laughs> he's trying to mind melt there, it looked like. No, he just grabbed his eyes. He's just trying to do what he did earlier. It's like his signature move. He's like a wrestler. <laughs> oh, he's going in for the head crush. For the Gallagher. <laughs> <laughs> no guarantee that was going to work, Spock. Yeah, that that he logical. had no idea there was a ship coming. No, he's Spock. He no, perfectly he saw calculated the that. ship go faster underneath him. But, but he, he, didn't know that he, could do that, gonna... he could do that calculation in his head, Brandon. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No. <laughs> I don't buy it even for spot. You need a binar to do that. Why did I or like data. this movie as much as hmm? I did? Or data? Yeah. See, this is why I stopped trusting myself about Star Trek after this. I was like, no, I can't be trusted. It's Star Trek. I'm just what too excited because it's Star Trek. Sequence. I don't know. He's gonna freeze him. Oh, he is freezing him. It's it, he's putting him in one of the same tubes from the body bag. I think. How, well, so you, you you've gotten the lock locks on everybody every other time. Room. He, he said you can't get a lock on him because they're moving, but yet Scotty's been doing it since... Yeah. But well, he's also not in the transporter, so how's he going to get a lock on anyone? Well, that's <laughs> yeah. a really good point, too. <laughs> Remember when uh, Chekhov had to run through half the ship to get to the transporter room? When he was like, I can do that? Uh-oh. Oh, he did take a phaser blast. He's going to keep coming. Oh, yes, my God! He does do that! Yes. He takes four of them. That's vaporize five. him. You guys... That's six. No, vaporize she needs him alive. Him. You guys, I was kidding. Why do they him alive? That's, oh, what, that's what he just oh, said. For the blood. For the blood, that's right. Are you paying attention? No. Well, that's that's fair. I'm not. To be, <laughs> fair, to be fair, I'm hardly that's, paying attention, too. That's For fair. the blood. I forgot. Yep. Once again, <laughs> once again, just so much punching. <laughs> Okay, but what I want what I want Spock to say after all that is, so you don't understand, this is hardly doing anything. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I know it looks like I've just lost my mind, but I, like I, I have to hit Khan in the face forty five times. Okay. What is this? He's back. Yep. That's what happens when you come Seven back. Seven the minutes dead. after they made us think maybe they killed off Kurt. Seven minutes in death. Not really dead. Magic trigger, ma barely dead. Brandon. Yeah, mostly he's, and, dead. <laughs> he's only we, mostly dead. When we dead. get to beyond, we have to just kind of pretend like none of this happened I because know. we now can beam halfway across the galaxy yeah. and cure death, and we can cure death. <laughs> so you, death warp travel no longer now, obsolete. To be fair, you could make the argument that at some point you're going to run out of con blood, but see. He could now his pain it. in Star Trek Five is no longer legitimate. He could have saved his dad. <laughs> <laughs> doesn't need his pain. <laughs> he doesn't need his pain. It's hilarious. This is rough, and uh, it hurts my feelings. So because... where's Khan now? Is he in jail? Yes. Uh, he's going to go on trial. Oh, okay. We're not going to see the trial, but he's going to go on trial. Okay. Or he, he's being... I think he gets saved in a cryo to, to later be put on trial. I think that's what they say. I can't remember now. They should just not keep them at all. Why don't they just destroy them? Well, because they're back and freeze alive. That's not really the Starfleet thing to do, right? Yeah. Well, they've already done a lot of other crazy stuff. <laughs> oh, okay. You're not going by Star Trek rules. You're going by... <laughs> Whatever this is. How cool okay. is that flag, though? No, that looks stupid. It had, like, a gear around it. You what was like that it? about? No, I did not like that. What was that gear? Look, Brandon, he will not eat it in a box. He will not eat it with a fox. And there's a hat. There's Starship Troopers. <laughs> Would you like to know more? 
I, I want to get you one of those, one no. of those hats. And try no one. I, they, uh, no one even remembers this existed because I certainly haven't heard seen th- these hats. <laughs> I'm going to get one custom made for you. And you're going to be so moved, even though you think it looks stupid, you're going to wear it. <laughs> he's not. He's going to sell it on eBay. He's sell it on eBay. <laughs> well, they fixed it. Yeah, pretty It's quick. all night back to normal. And now they put the monologue in canon. And what's annoying about oh, that is that it man. already was. So that's a Zephram Cochran speech, according to Enterprise. Right. And they don't know that. So they're treating it like they're coming up with it. And that's kind of irritating. Because it was just, it was already canonicized. And if you're going to do that, and I think the best way possible, um, you can argue whether or not that's cool, but it, it there is already precedent for it in Enterprise. And we reference Enterprise like it happened, so yeah. I don't know. I feel like we did this ending already. <clears throat> this is... I, I feel like we did this already. See? Uh, they're going to go on the five-year mission, even though uh, I thought they were already in the five-year nope. mission. Yeah, because Kirk says they're giving us the five-year mission. So Yeah, she's glad to be part of the family, and then she'll never be seen again. That's true! We don't have her in the next one. And there was no reason to have her, because she and Kirk don't have a romance or anything. They didn't do anything. Maybe it happened in those in the time between the, the next... Years. Yeah, maybe it did. Well, that's a good point. When they when they, when they they truck it ahead that far, mm-hmm. they can get away with never mentioning certain things again. Yeah, and if they needed to, they'd say, well, you know, you didn't see it, but they had a whole fling, and then they... they and then he got her pregnant, up. and yeah. Yeah. Maybe not. Kirk's maybe in this universe, dead. he he, he, he knocked her up dead again. Dead. Yeah, may, maybe maybe in this universe he knocked her up again, but she had twins this time. Oh, but not the most deadbeat dad. That would be no. Worf. Who's David, the David? <laughs> Worf is the worst, dude. Would that be David? <laughs> so true? David and Donnie oh. Marcus. David what? I David like and Donnie Marcus blue twins. <laughs> they look this Donnie? Like in the yeah, last Don- one. Donnie Marcus. He's the one that didn't get stabbed by the Klingon. <laughs> She, she uh, for a minute she entertained Neiman, but then decided against it. Neiman, Neiman Marcus. Oh come on! <laughs> and Roberta Orchi. <laughs> oh! Well, we did it, guys. That's, that's what I was kind of worried about. I, I, I didn't, I didn't want to go back on I and mean, watch this again, you guys, <laughs> because I really enjoyed this in the theater, and I didn't want to ruin my theater going experience. You know, honestly, it's about the same as what I eventually settled Are you on. Are scared a, a, with Beyond? After I saw I'm it. not. Okay. I am confident in Beyond. I, I'm not I am also confident in Beyond I because good, I think yeah. it was just a solid movie. Beyond I've also gone back to because yeah. I like it a lot. Right. Um, and so I have I have scrutinized that movie and oh, okay. it's not perfect and it's got issues. Right. I've still only seen it in theaters. But nothing... Uh, no, that's not true. We did it in Star Trek Club and you were there. Did I we? I remember that. Yep. Oh. Mm, you were definitely with us. Uh, I haven't seen Alice Eve in anything since. Yeah, this. I haven't either. I hadn't seen her in anything before this. Yeah, I, I didn't see anything. Was. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But I'm with you. I don't think she's a great actress no. in this. I mean, who knows? Maybe she gives a great performance somewhere. But you think she was cast for her uh, scary eyebrows? Probably. Mm-hmm. You think they cast her because she looked like a bad guy's daughter? Yeah. It's like my my father is an evil RoboCop, so I have these scary eyebrows. Yeah. Urban almost didn't come back over this movie. Oh, he didn't? Because didn't he was upset them. he didn't get anything to do. Yeah. And I agree. So the first movie, Abrams makes a big deal out of, I want to tell a Spot Kirk story. And the second movie, he makes a big deal out of, I want to tell a Spot Kirk story. And there's Quinto, or there's uh, Paul Urban going, remember back in TOS when it was like a triad? Yeah. yeah. My character mattered back then. And I bet, I don't know this for sure, but I bet he started to feel like almost a parody of that character. Where it's like, okay, you cast me because I could do a pretty good DeForest Kelly. But you told your other two main stars not to do like, right. like parodies of their characters. And I'm not saying Carl Urban is doing that, right. but they write him like that's all they want him to do. Mm-hmm. Right. Not beyond. He gets, he gets stuff to do there. And it feels like the triad again there. Wait, there's a guy named Deep Roy. Well, Deep Roy, so that's Keatner. That's that character's name. De- Deep Roy is the the, uh, the the little guy that plays oh. the rock creature guy, and um, he was uh, he was the Oompa Loompas in the remake of uh, Charlie and Chocolate Factory. Oh, huh. Gotcha. 
And I'm sure that's why he got this role. Crazy. It was because of stuff like that. Because he's used to being kicked up in makeup. Yeah. You guys ever going to watch this again? Uh, probably not. If you can not on my own. Uh. For, I, I mean, unless I'm showing somebody like a compendium of Star Trek. Yeah. <laughs> you know what, though? Beyond watches as a perfectly fine sequel to 09. Really? Like, if mm-hmm. you watch those back-to-back, that's... That's a good this sequel. Movie, you just pretend, it never just pretend ever like happened. this didn't exist, yeah. And that's easy to do because it's not referenced. Right, they don't reference it. Yeah. Uh, what you sort of have, and I know I've got tons of issues with 09, and we, we talked about a lot of that, but what's really weird is, com- relatively anyway, mm-hmm. uh, you now have, we've only got the three movies with the Abrams first, but you, the, the, the Kelvin universe, but you now have the opposite thing that people talked about with the TOS movies. Where the odd ones are good, and the one even one is not. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's true. Yeah, it flipped. It flipped. It flipped with Nemesis. I remember. Nemesis was Unless, the one that broke the... I, I remember, <laughs> I remember the when rule. Patrick Stewart did an interview for like Star Trek the Magazine, and he was oh, talking about how they were... It's even one. It's going to be good. Yes, no, he, he really did. He was like, he's like really excited because it's an even-numbered Star Trek movie, and the even-numbered ones are the good ones, and it totally just was and not. That broke it, yeah. And, of course, it depends on who you are. There's a lot of people that don't, that don't agree with that because of personal well, taste. Um, my wife doesn't like Star Trek VI. Yeah. So she doesn't agree with the odd even thing. I like and I, I like Star Trek Six, but I, I like Star Trek Three also. I mean, it's well, not and Sarah good also likes Star right. Trek Three. Yeah, right. Um, and it's all relative. Like, I up until you get to Nemesis, uh, that argument holds, you know, relatively pretty well. Right. Uh, but then. You know, I like motion picture now more than I used to. So. Right. I like motion picture now more than I actually got to actually see it on the big screen, which was right. really cool. Yeah. Right. That was but cool. I know a lot of people that like three more than four. Really? Mm. I don't know if I like three more than four. Well, some but, people uh, just think that four is too jokey and hokey. And I kind of like I that. Like I like that. It's kind of like they're a piece of the action on no, the big screen. Here. and stuff. Yep. The only thing that's a little like bit weird game. going back to four now for me. The, the more I thought about it, is there's a thing I complain about in in Voyager and Enterprise that I never <laughs> thought to throw at uh, at Voyage Home, What's which that? is whenever we go back in time to present day, mm-hmm. to whatever the time is that we filmed it in, we forget about the history that we've established in '60s Star Trek about that time period. When, when you're that close to the eugenics wars, it's right. still going to look different. It's not going to look right. exactly like it like it did. But we don't think about that because the eugenics wars don't happen until 96. Right. So when we do it in Voyager, you, That's you're, really quite, you're quite foul on it because it's exactly that year. Right. And you're like, wait a minute. Right. Um, yeah. we're, we're, we're talking about, um, right. what is what is that episode? Help me out. Uh, the uh, Future's End. Future's End, yeah. Yes. yeah. yeah. Um, well, and, then, yeah. and then when we do it uh, in, in Enterprise with Carpenter Street, it's also silly Carpenter because that's Street. right around World War III. <laughs> well... No, it's just before it, but... It, it, yeah, it's... Carpenter Street is like whatever year that that was made. It's, it's 03. Yeah. Yeah. 03, 04. So, I mean, it would have, I guess, been 60 years before, but I feel like they still would have maybe had some eugenics wars. Um, unless it was all happening on well, the other side of the planet. Well, it different by, by Gabriel Bell. That's true. But see, we're projecting into the future, so we're changing right. things. But right. if it's happening right now, we can't confuse the audience. Right. Anyway. So, yeah, I never thought about that before, but technically, I mean, that's nitpicky, but technically Voyage Home shouldn't look as much like exactly the, the 80s that we lived through. Potentially, yeah. I mean, I, I'll i allow it since, it's, you know, <laughs> they didn't really it. establish a lot that happened in the 80s or anything, you know? I, lo- I love that, you, that you'll allow it. That's, that's yeah. Weird. Here's all the random people. They're still going. <laughs> Well, we have to see the rule these days with uh, with big budget. Um, Every single person. Um, blockbusters 
is that you have to hear the entire movie score again through the credits. Mm-hmm. That's that's what we have to do now. But they hear the entire CD, Brandon. And they uh, they roll the credits right. to accommodate that and length of time. Joe from Craft Services I'm, needs to get his credit. I'm joking, on the movie. but yes. So, yeah. Right. Yep. Look, he had an important job, okay? If people don't get their coffee. burritos in time... Yeah. <laughs> how in the world are they expecting... He's got to set the sausages just right in the sausage tray, too. Come is that is God that God. the sausage section? <laughs> and does it have sausage separation? It has, sausage it has separation. different types of sausages, <laughs> yes. Prepare for sausage. sausage. Sa- prepare, prepare for sausage separation. <laughs> I don't know. He doesn't even say it like that. He says sausage, sausage sep. Sausage sep. <laughs> <laughs> Oh right! Oh boy! Well, that you know what? It. it was it was fun doing that, that with you fun. guys. It really was. Yeah. yeah. As far um, as being a better way to watch it again, this was the best yeah. way to watch it again. Yeah. The only way I can recommend watching this movie now is talk through all of it. Yes. Pirates Make sure there was no uh, dead air at all. Yes. Just keep talking. Well, the nice thing is we get to go out on a good one. Yes. So we're mm-hmm. going to do Beyond next time, of course. That's And that's going to be the end of it. We will have done commentaries now, you guys, on, on all 13 all Star Trek movies. films. Uh, so cool. Yes. And then after that, we have a uh, new uh, Star Trek project right. that uh, we're planning on doing that I will tell you guys more about uh, right. shortly. But uh, anyway. Yeah. So I'm excited to move on and do some other things. Yes. Talk about some things that aren't the Star Trek movies. Yes. But thanks for doing this with me, you guys. Yeah. Thanks awesome. for having me. Yeah. Us. Us. Sure. Well, we uh we're all hungry, so we, we're gonna prepare for sausage set. <laughs> and we will see you guys next time. I'm Captain Logan. This was Adam Meredith. Yes. And Brandon Grimm. See you later. Later, folks. Bye.